Hello and welcome back to a nomad tale. In this episode, we set sail on a capital ship, dominate a niche ecosystem, and amass a small fortune along the way. What begins as a humble idea turns into an unforgettable experience as we traverse thousands of systems in search of targets. We will overcome a myriad of rare challenges, interact with increasingly dangerous capsuleers, and risk assets worth orders of magnitude more than ever before. The Jolly Ranchers Corporation cordially invites you to join alongside us for this adventure. But there are a few rules. You must take your time, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Okay, so before we really get rolling here, I have to break down this episode because it's quite large, really. There's going to be six parts. The first one, well, you're in it right now. This is the catch-up, the pre-game, or whatever you want to call it, to where we end our current gameplay cycles and we begin setting our eyes on our adventure. The adventure itself is going to be four parts. And then after that, we're gonna have a wind down segment. So six parts in total, you're in the first one, and I anticipate each of them lasting about a half an hour, but I'm not gonna hold myself to that. So it's gonna be a long episode, but what I anticipate is that each individual segment is going to be rewarding and fun on its own. Also, I think it's probably worth mentioning that during this episode, we hit the one year milestone of a nomad tale and then some. So lots of really exciting things going on for me personally, and hopefully it should be fun to watch. Does this look familiar to you? It should. It really should. Do you remember how at the end of episode 13 of A Nomad Tale, we showed off the idea of basically camping inside of somebody's hole without them realizing it and using that stealthiness to hunt them? Remember that? Well, here I am, not that much longer later, and I find this curious. We're in the same system, and no, I did not see this. This is the very same Fortizar, and curiously enough, it's unanchoring. How interesting. How very, very interesting. Okay, I got something exciting here. We have ourselves a ghost site. Basically, why I'm excited is because I'm gonna go to it and I don't have the ability to tank any shots in this build, so. Scanning one. Scanning two. Scanning three, there's a hundred mil in there. Scanning four is a pack rat. I think we'll just take the hundred mil and see if we can get lucky here. We got 30 seconds in. Okay, so we'll hack, take our time here. Let's go this way, oh, we'll go up then. Oh, look how lucky we got, nice. Beautiful. All right, let's we'll take the 100 mil then, cool. Warp the hell off. Instead of getting baited on another can here, we're learning a little bit about ghost sites now. Oh, I didn't even know there was control towers here. How cool is that?
So, as of right now, I still live in a Bazin. I choose this location for a number of reasons we've talked about, but to summarize, it's the most centralized location I could find in New Eden, but along with centralization comes traffic, and along with traffic comes pirates, and along with pirates comes people willing to drop big things, and today is no different. So would you believe it? Somehow, my luck is just crazy or I don't know what's going on, but I found, you guessed it, another ghost site, which is remarkable for a number of reasons because we found a lot of them and so on and so forth. So basically it is a blood raider. We are going to go there. We're gonna cherry pick. And once again, we're using a ship that will die in one hit. We have no tank. So if we fail a hack, or if we make a mistake, or if we take too long, we will die instantly, but we don't really give a shit. Just truthfully. The reason for that is because, just to be clear, uh, this doesn't have to even get posted to Z-Kill, even though I will probably post it if I do die. But either way, let's take a look. Yet another ghost site. Look at that, cool. So because there's nothing valuable, we're not gonna worry about getting more. But what we will do, oh, we don't have enough room for all this? Jeez Louise. All right, we'll jettison it then. I feel like I've seen some systems with a lot of citadels, like the Laserhawk system, for example couple other ones but this one has to be number two i mean look at how many dang citadels there are we're dealing with what is that four fortazars four astra houses a rideru i mean that's crazy i think they're parabellums based on my quick look on z kill but i can't even see like who lives here because my D scan is not set up for this. It's pretty funny. Oh, yeah, three Athenors. Yeah, no matter what, um, this is fascinating. I really don't understand why they have so many buildings, but this is surely some like center of commerce for them. So maybe I'll take a look around later, but realistically, I'm probably just going to try to take some of these sites and dip. I want to look at the statics of this place one more time. It's a three and a five. So this is this could legitimately be their home because three and a five would be good hunting grounds for them. I think this might be Parabellum's home. So what I'm gonna do, I've already sorted out what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do these two data sites in here. Okay. And then I'm gonna drop a seed in here. And the reason I do that, and I do this not just for Parabellum, I do this for all the major groups, is because having a seed inside of their hole is, um, I mean, it's useful for a bunch of things that we might wanna do later on down the line. Not just like sneaky things, but sometimes like filmmaking stuff as well. So uh, we're definitely going to see this. And I'm going to find out more about this hole and see if it's their main. And no ill will towards them, but I definitely w would want to be able to come back here. Just like I wanted to come back to Laserhawk's main hole as well. Just to be able to take a look around. So yeah, that's the plan. We'll see if I'm right on that. And we will certainly get a seed in here regardless just in case I am right, and uh, we'll go from there. So we're not gonna go for can three here couple reasons. I think it's just the mid-grade one. We could potentially go for both. Gotta be careful here. Oh, look at how lucky we got. We're gonna go for both. Let's be greedy. Let's be greedy. It's 
see if we can be greedy here. Probably kind of close, honestly. Remember, we can't die. If we die, we lose it all. Here it is, right here. Got it. We gotta be quick. Loot it. Get the fuck out. Can we cloak? Can we cloak? Okay, so today is May 14th, 2023, and it is, ceremoniously, the one-year anniversary of a Nomad Tale. So what does that mean? As promised, we're going to do some fun stuff. We're going to get a new toy. We're going to be buying one of these. One of these bad boys. And then we're going to be fitting up, sitting in it, and discussing all of its options, moving it around, and showcasing some of the use cases that we come up with. Now all that's gonna take a long time to get through, so we're gonna inch through it. But today, I'm focused on one thing and one thing only. And that is enjoying the idea that I've been doing this for a year and I still love it. But more importantly, buying the Oracle and sitting inside of it. So that'll be my goal today. I imagine that once I start sitting in it, my brain will go crazy and I'll start coming up with all types of cool scenarios to use it for. I have my ideas right now for what I want to use it for, but we're going to officially talk about that once I'm in the in the Rourke wall so I can show what I'm talking about instead of just uh, alluding to it. So we're almost there. This is the last segment we're going to discuss anything without owning a Rourke wall. So get used to this. Rourke wall, Orca, and Porpoise. It's a cool combo. So how the hell do you buy a Rorqual? There are so many of them for sale. They're all over the place. You can't buy them in a high sack. Look at all of them. Which one do you buy? Well, we can go by price and go to the ones close to Jitta. We can try to find some close to where I live in a Bazin. Or we can try to add in a third factor, which is the price point compared to what we're actually buying. Now, if you just buy the ship, you're gonna spend almost five bill for it, right? And you're probably gonna get dragged to a location that's not ideal to have a Oracle in, like the north, okay? But if you keep digging down, and you dig down, and you look at some of these, you'll notice the price gets higher, but a lot of them have items inside that are not just the Oracle, see this? And if you're clever, you can use Eve Prazel and look at the value of all the items and compare it to the cost of the contract, right? Pretty simple. So basically, we kind of looked through these just now, and one of them caught my eye, and that was this one. 
And if we look at this, it's 6.75 billion. That's a lot of ask, right? But we have a Rorqual. So that's immediately minus 4.5. So now we're looking at 2.75 for all of these items, okay? Now we don't want these items, but if the price is right and it's in the right spot, you know? Now Eve Prazel puts all of these items at 3.16 billion to 4.11 billion, okay? And that doesn't include this, which I'm assuming is garbage. So we won't even worry about that. But what this means is that I can realistically probably recuperate that 2.75 billion or more. So we're not really too fussed on making a profit on this, but crucially, the reason why that initially caught our eye was because of its location. And if we look at it, look at where this work world is located. Right in the middle of Empire. How nice is that? And if we're really clever with it, we realize we can use the work world to jump to a Bazin, which is right here, right? So this is probably going to be the one that we're looking at buying right now. We're going to go over there and look at the station and see where it's located. Like, where it's actually held. Because there are, of course, stations that it is dangerous to do cap work on. And I'm not going to teach anybody how to pilot caps necessarily. I'm going to assume some baseline knowledge here. But that's a really important one. Is We can't just buy it from any station. Some stations are, or at least were historically designed to be able to catch clumsy capital pilots on because they spit you out past the redock location so we're going to try to avoid anything like that anytime we do anything with a cap that involves a station we thoroughly scope the station out we see what the situation is in terms of docking undocking and being able to sino on top of it without bumping off all that sort of stuff and we have methods to be able to do that so long story short we're going to head over to every shore right now and look at the station where the rook is and we might just go ahead and buy it because even if we take a bath on the extra items, it's no big deal. The orc is rigged with triple bulkheads. Or sorry, the Rorqual is rigged with triple bulkheads, which is probably what we want. But it doesn't really matter. We're, we're more interested in getting it in the location we want. We would pay a premium, but we found an opportunity to possibly make a profit in the location we want. So, so one of the most important things you have to be aware of when you do anything with caps is that people generally have a lot of experience in catching them and they love noobs just like me trying to buy them and use them so you have to give them more respect than you feel they're uh, deserved of so for example the contract in this system that we came to investigate is by somebody in this corp somebody in local now is local working properly today i don't know context being that local is a little screwed up right now in eve the uh the system's kind of broken but it appears to be working here and crucially, the contract is by somebody in that corporation, so they're probably keeping an eye on it. Safe bet. But anyway, we're here, and if we look at the Rorqual, look, we can now fly it. And we do one more quick look at this. And this is what I noticed on the way here. Look at this abyssal damage control. It's only a gravid mutaplasmid, right? So it's not an unstable. But... Look at the rolls on those structure uh, resistance profiles. I mean, sure, the explosive one is bad, but those are like max rolls on three out of four. That's, I mean, that's a pretty powerful damage control. That's probably worth a lot. Um, these newts, I didn't, they're not really worth anything. They don't really have much in the way of bonuses. This one's okay, but it's definitely not worth a lot. Um, other than that, it looks like a pure profit, assuming that I am able to sell this stuff. I haven't thought of fits or what to put on it yet, so I'm actually not a thousand percent sure we'll keep these on, but I'm, I'm willing to um, assume that there's no regs that are going to really benefit me too much for what I'm doing, and I'm not going to worry about it. Everything else seems to be pretty decent. But because these things are not purchased very frequently, and more specifically, the workable that we're looking at, this one, this is a tackle Rorqual. It even says it right here. It's a tackle Rorqual. And you can see, if you look at the fit, it's bulkheads, it has bulkhead rigs, it has heavy warp scramblers, right? It has tons of newts. This thing is specifically for landing and grabbing tackle on stuff like supers and not letting go. That's what it's for, okay? But we're gonna repurpose it. We're gonna grab this, we're gonna sell everything that we don't need off of it, which is most of the mods. We're gonna recuperate the cost, and we're gonna repurpose this into our uh, Rockwell for 
our funsies purposes. So for now, we're not gonna buy it. We're gonna wait and we'll come back maybe in an hour or maybe after downtime and buy it, something like that. Um, the reason is because just in case local is working and this guy is here, I don't want them to like see me show up and buy it like a noob immediately, you know? Easy peasy. Okay, so I bought the Oracle and I was a little bit scared moving it from Groot into Abazin in one go because I haven't jumped a cap in a long time and the stations in Abazin are pretty unforgiving and we know that Abazin is a hot spot for PvP. So I moved the Oracle to Nyardarang, which is a nearby system, to practice the mechanics before I'm going to move it to Abazin right now. So essentially, I have re-familiarized myself with all the timings and everything, and I think I can pull this off. So just to be extra careful though, I am doing this at downtime, and I anticipate that I'm probably going to do a lot of my moving at downtime. This is pretty obvious. If you follow my series, you understand why people do this. It's because if you screw up, you get saved by getting kicked off, right? Cool. So we're just waiting right now, hoping to not get spotted. As I say that, this is sterile pops out, but you can see the bookmarks I have set up and it is a tight fit to get a Rorkel or a, a, a freighter on these stations and I am quite nervous about it. Uh, you really have to put your Sino in a location where the ship has no chance to either bounce off of the station or be too far away to dock, right? Generally, the latter is worse in most most scenarios because if you bounce, you do get a chance to dock, but... So this is the station in Yardarang, or however you say it. This is a very safe, quiet station here. Usually the only people here are camping the Stargates. So what we're gonna do is prepare to move by breaking our invulnerability timer, getting ready to light the Sino. And I have to admit, I'm getting increasingly more nervous the closer this timer gets. I'm definitely regretting my decision to move to Abazin right about now. I don't really know why I'd have to do this other than to pick up my stuff, but you know what? I'm doing it. I'm here and the time is now and there's no backing out. I've set this up as properly as possible. So now, we just take a deep breath and wait. You do have to go just a little bit before the timer because you definitely do not want to have your Rorqual floating in space when downtime hits. So let's go. So I lit the Sino, which means everybody here knows the Sino is here. You just have to make sure I don't bounce and no bounce. Perfect landing. Perfect landing. Woo! We're docking. Oh my god, the tornadoes. Yo, it's EF. He's gonna kill my Sino. Okay, the, the Rorqual is here, which is, I think, the hardest part of the whole journey is done. Getting it into a basin to pick up our... Rest in peace, Venture Sino. Dock. 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 Don't lose the pod. What? There you go. That was pretty funny. Okay, we're back after downtime, and it looks like EF is too, with his tornadoes nicely lined up. This is a staple local of a Bazin. Wow, that was successful, and I could not be happier. Okay, so it has been an entire week, give or take a day or two, of me trying to fit this orca into a basin, okay? This is kind of troubling for me. Because I really wanted to have all my stuff in a basin before I move out, but basin is a complicated system. You have your gate campers, but then you have your locals, and then you have your real pirates in there too, and unfortunately, a group of real pirates caught me trying to slip my orca in, and they were not going to let me do it. 
even at downtime, they were ready to make plays and I wasn't prepared to call their bluff on capital escalation. So long story short, after many, many tries to get this into Abazin safely, I have failed. Now, there's nothing stopping you from just YOLOing it in, but I don't do that. I do it safely or not at all. So what we've done is we've pivoted, we've reacted to the situation, and I'm going to Poshman haul this back to Jitta, and then we're going to let it sit there and not worry about it anymore. Instead of stressing myself out, let's just move on. Let's park the Orca back in Jitta, strip it down, and move on. Okay, so we've got our Rorqual in a Bazin, ready to rock. Now, what the hell are we actually doing? Well, as I've been playing and poking my head out of Anoikis into Losek, I've stumbled upon something called Myco Saracens. Now, these are highly valuable but scarce clouds of goodness that, if we're talking about the most important stuff up front, oddly resemble cotton candy when decompressed and jello cubes when compressed. I've always made it a priority to snap up any Myco Saracens that I've found while looking around, but I've never gone out of my way to find them. That changes this episode. We're going to assign ourselves a simple task that will take us far and wide and require many, many man hours of effort to complete that task to fill the Rorqual's mining hold with compressed Myco Saracens at roughly equal parts. To save you the trouble of understanding what this means or crunching the numbers, we're basically looking at a goal of harvesting 375,000 meters cubed of each type of Myco Saracen, of which there are eight, for a total of 3 million meters cubed worth of gas. We will compress all of that gas down into 300,000 meters cubed to fit in the hold, and when and if we reach that goal, we will transport it all back in one shot and begin to process it. Now, if you know anything about mycoceracin distribution, you'll immediately understand just how far we're gonna have to travel to collect all eight types of the gas. But if you also understand LOSEC as a whole, you'll recognize that we are going to have to deal with a lot of different factions and people to accomplish the goal overall. Now, there are a number of other tasks and quests that we will be assigning to ourselves along the way, but this is the overarching goal, to tour the land and spin cotton candy in our newest whale, the Rorqual. This adventure will force us to interface with Losek in a number of fascinating ways, all of which will be documented and discussed at length, success notwithstanding. We've chosen the Rorqual for this job for a number of reasons, some of which are obvious. First of all, it can jump, as you've seen, which means we can haul our loot with virtually no effort or risk. Second, it stores a near unlimited amount of industrial ships, which is perfect given our interests and goals. Third, it has an absolutely enormous standard cargo bay when rigged and fit properly, which allows us to store just about everything we could ever need along the way. Fourth, we can store blank jump clones inside of the Rorqual, which allows us to summon our characters to the Rorqual from anywhere in New Eden, which I anticipate may come in handy as we move around frequently. Lastly, but not really lastly, the Rorqual is easy to sino around because it only requires a venture or a sigil, which opens up non-downtime movement for us if we so choose. Our first destination on this epic journey is the east. We are specifically targeting Amamake in Haimatar in order to begin processing some of the fullerites that we've collected in previous episodes as well as begin harvesting the two types of Mycoceracins found in that area, Azure and Vermilion. I'm not sure what to expect on this adventure. 
the stakes will be astronomically high by the end of it, and given my plans for how to harvest the Mycocerasins, I anticipate making far fewer friends and far more foes. But we are nothing if not curious and bold. It is not the checkered flag that captures our gaze. We're nomads. It is the itinerant spirit that drives us. It is our impetus. What do you imagine when you think about New Eden's east? Do you picture a desolate, rusty wasteland, home to bridges leading to lands of varying hostility? Or do you imagine a bastion of liberty, a humble home built on blood, sweats, and tears? I like to think that there are a number of ways to imagine New Eden. The standard star map is useful, I think that Dotlan is powerful, but actual real 2D static maps to me are beautiful and indeed necessary to really imagine myself there, especially in a game like EVE that's really abstract. Take this map for example. Here we have sov.space, that is the actual URL their coalition map, something many Nullsec players will instantly recognize. If you watch this map evolve over time, you will see the colors ebb and flow, almost like a tide. Here's another map by Rick Stravix, colored by Kaisha Sai, that really shows off the densities and distances of the star systems in New Eden. This map is of particular use for capsuleers who like to scribble because it's by far the cleanest that I've ever seen. Job well done to both of them. Yet another is this hand-drawn map by Ithaca Hawk, complete with era-specific lore and easter eggs. This kind of content is just so incredible to me for so many reasons, chief of which because it just captivates me. For that reason, I love to pull up this map in particular when I travel to a new location to really immerse myself a bit more, and I might do that for you as well. Let's explore the east, home of the Minmatar, gateway to Nullsex, Droneslands, and the birthplace of our main character. Okay, so we are here in Amamake, and this is the station we've chosen to store our stuff in. It's just a normal station, but it's very easy to sign out to, you can see up here. Very easy to sign out to. We're just going to take a quick look around. So, this is one of the main reasons I'm here, is there is a Tatara that is open for public use right over here. and. We're going to use that. There's probably better ones around, but we're just going to use this one because I like the stability of it. But if we find a better one later, we will do it. Now, there's also a Sotio over there, which we're not going to use much of, but possibly. Then we have a Keepstar here. So this is kind of laid out a bit like a Nullsec city with all of the... Uh, all of the citadels kind of in line with other things, right? Of course, there's other citadels um, over here. Smaller stuff and there are passes and whatnot. But Alamake is basically owned by Hydra Reloaded. Yeah, this is what Amamake looks like. It's a quaint little city. There's not too much traffic. There are some camps on Osager Gate, which is high sec, which leads to Renz. So we're gonna pop over to Renz right now and check out that market and go from there. Renz was one of the original four market hubs in EVE Online, but sadly it's nothing compared to Jeddah and even Amar nowadays. But the thing about Renz is that it's kind of a Twin Cities situation with Heck. They're close by and combined, they're not bad. Kinda cool, doing a little mining with the homie. See if he's dangerous or not. He is not. He has killed 6,000-esque worth of ships. 6,000. Okay, so I've recruited the Venture into my fleet. 
I don't know why, but we're now a team. Surely I will not come to regret this. Of course not. I also had to pay 250,000 ISK to invite him, so I'm glad he accepted. That would have felt bad if he just instantly declined it. <laughs> So if you ever think you're having a bad day, just remember, you could be sitting there in your freighter, just chilling at a keep star in low sack, and you go to grab a snack. You're tethered. You're right next to it. What's the worst that could happen? And you come back a few minutes later with your pop tarts, and you're now in Jitta because your freighter is 30 or 40 kilometers away from the tether. It has been bumped off by a scythe fleet issue and a Talos. And they have killed your freighter and potted you. That is, um... Yeah, that's unfortunate. So one of the things that I've kind of put a little bit of focus on since setting up at this reaction station is just understanding what the gas I harvest actually does, right? This is kind of a big issue for me because up until now, like an entire year, I've just been harvesting gas, compressing it, and selling it. That's been the whole strategy. But now I kind of am interested in seeing what that gas does, you know what I mean? So to do that, we've started reacting the fullerenes, we've kind of figured that out, how that works. We've carted in minerals, we've carted in fuel blocks, and we have the blueprints for them, right? So I also wanted to make sure that I have the synth booster reaction as well. Now, this is all really boring, I understand, but what this allows me to do is take the stuff I harvest and then start to work with it and use it, right? And that's kind of an interesting, important part of the experience, is that I knew I was eventually going to do something with my materials. I just didn't know what, and now I'm starting to learn. So it's exciting. But the reason I'm talking now is because I went to make some Synth X Instinct Booster uh, Pure Substance, this stuff, which is the base material for the actual boosters. And I realized that I'm missing a material and it's called garbage. I'm missing garbage. And I just thought that was amazing that in order to make these cheap, really low efficacy boosters, these synth ones, you literally need garbage. <laughs> just thought that was awesome. Oh man. But anyway, uh, to sum this up, I am currently just figuring out how to use all the gas I mine. And then I have uh, a couple ideas on what I want to do next. So we'll see what happens. So now that I have set up my reactions in the Rorqual and have essentially staged in a new system, getting ready for some bigger changes, I have made some smaller changes to individual characters. And one of them I want to talk about is the scanner. So what I've done is I've taken the hacking skills out of my scanner. Look at this. No longer can hack. So that means this is no longer an all-in-one character. What's so cool about that is that kind of actually opens us up for a few things. Now there's a number of ways you could go right now if you're gonna run a pure scanning ship, but I have personally leaned on the pacifier because the passive warp speed is just too good to pass up, okay? Now we're looking at a very, very basic ship here. Now it is still close to 400 mil, which is expensive, we know that, but the ship doesn't get caught because it doesn't actually go to sites. It just hits wormholes. And on wormholes, it has nullification and three second align time. So with a couple scan mods and a three second align time and a warp core stabilizer for low sac when you're passing through, just in case you find an insta locker and there's a clutter camp, you can still easily get out with this mod right here, typically. Um, but basically what you're able to do here is since you're now never gonna go to a site, and you're no longer at risk of dying, 
you can afford to spend a little bit of money on the good virtues with the best scanning supplemental pod, right? But basically this allows us to have an absolutely ludicrously high scan probe strength. What, what that does is it allows us to, let's just see if I can show you instead of just flapping my gums about it. What ends up happening is when you have a system like this, you can actually just go ahead and bump it up all the way to 16. Now I know this system's so small, but let's pretend the system's a little bigger. You can go 16, right? So watch. Here, I'll even drink this just to be authentic. So if we scan right now, watch what happens. We're at 16 AU probe size, keep that in mind. Okay, so we just pretty much clarified everything here. And in JSpace, this doesn't happen quite as perfectly because a lot of the signal strengths are higher, but in KSpace, you're more or less just straight chilling. I mean, everything resolves almost instantly, so when you go through, you can just 16 AU the whole system. And there's no worrying about positioning celestials when you do it like that. Now, there's still plenty of reasons to do eight to two, four to one, in specific scenarios, but having this much scan strength and having the virtue pods means you can pretty much get away with doing eight to one or 16 to two pretty reliably in most scenarios. And I thought that's really cool. Wait a second, so we don't have hacking skills anymore? What do you mean, what the heck? Well, of course we do. We have hacking skills on our main character. They're maxed out, in fact, if you remember, back to the start of the series. We actually painstakingly maxed out our scanning skills. That kind of catches you up on some of these changes I've made to my characters. Um, of course, the big one is this guy can fly a Ruckle now, but in terms of small changes, we're going to make that adjustment. And the reason for that is simple, to wrap it up here succinctly at this point. I hate the idea of using Virtues and Azugma and stuff on a scanning character because I don't like risking all of that pod in a site for a couple hundred mil worth of loot tops or tens of mil usually so by splitting them up i'm able to abstract the activity of hacking into its own thing and then i can go through scan the sites and come back later in a ship perfectly purpose built for that one thing and the last thing i'll note is that i do have a swap here that can tank ghost sites all things said and considered these changes are going to be pretty dramatic in chase space, and when I'm in case space, this guy can just fly whatever he wants, since I don't do much hacking out here. Okay, well, I've never done a sleeper cache, but apparently you can just ninja some stuff and be on your way. Not so sure how I feel about this. Okay, so it gives us a rift. So this is we pop in here and there's a couple of cans. We loot them and then we do the mangle de- Oh, there's concentrated. Are those gonna hit us? Look for the defense alarm unit. Okay, there it is. I'm supposed to hack this with data now. It's going between data and relic. It's kind of cool. Uh oh, it's a big hack. Oh, we got lucky. Nice. All right, if I, I got it. After a, ha a pristine storage depot. Okay, right here. Let's go there. 26 mil. Oh, dude, that was cool. Polarized. All right, let me cloak up before I kill myself here I accidentally. So this is a uh, standard sleeper cache. This is what this looks like on the inside. And it's apparently just like a little dead space pocket area. Hmm. Okay, so that's basically what I'm supposed to just take. You're supposed to just warp in, hack those three, ignore the defense, and then hack the thing that spawns, and then you take the pristine storage. Dude, that's awesome. Wait, what are these even worth? Probably not much, right? Yeah, okay. Ooh, 10 mil. Cool. I love that. Love that. Okay. So, apparently I am doing another sleeper cache. This time the superior one. We just did a standard one. This is like 10 minutes later. Okay, there's the rift. 
In we go. Luckily, the hitbox on it is huge. Wow, that's really cool looking. I should have looked at that. It was like fluorescent. Okay, we're in the solar plant room. I feel like this thing is going to kill me. Well, the rats aren't hitting me yet. That's good. Oh, there we go. There it is. Alright, so... I hack the sensor. Oh, look, look, look. One of them just died. Okay, okay, so they're all dying. This thing's shooting them. I see. I see what's happening. So this guy is shooting them. Alright, so after that one dies, I think I'm gonna hack the can closest first. Okay, it's dead. Let's go. Alright. <laughs> Look at all these cans we get to hack. This is nuts. Very nice. All right, what did we get? So if we take everything and exclude our fits, 75 mil. Jeez. Oh wait, plus this. Oh my, oh my God, yo, what the fuck? Look at how much that cost. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy sh I love these now. I love them. They are my favorite thing ever now. Oh my god. Okay, so it's been literally like two minutes. And there's already another cache here. So like... <laughs> we're just gonna do the same thing we just did. This time we're gonna do it with confidence, right? So as soon as that bookmark shows up, we'll head in there. Okay, so we can hack that container in the main room now. Didn't hack that one before. It seems like all this gas does damage, so if you can tank it, you can hack those. Oh, do you have to do the solar thing first? Ah, okay, I see. Got it. Got it. Okay, so we'll, we'll try that later. I think I'll have to get another fit for it or something. Hmm. Alright, so we got another, another little ghost side here. But now I know how this works. After this episode, I finally understand. When you get a ghost site, if there's a snowflake can, like one off to the side or up top, don't hack that one. Hack the other ones. And then this one will be here when you're done. How cool is that? He's got a web. He's got a web. He's got a web. Ash. 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 Gotta go in with the three. Wait, where'd he go? Oh no. <laughs> Alright, that was really funny. <laughs> Does he not realize he's in danger?
That'll probably do it right there. I guess he didn't know he was in danger. Fascinating. So I went to grab some ventures and I think there is a endurance in my gas cloud. It's not. There's an endurance somewhere though. There he is. He left. He left. Why are you gonna leave like that? All right, so the very next day, after finding the superior and limited and all that stuff, or the superior and standard sleeper caches, I found a limited one right here. This is awesome. I love this so much. I love this in a rational amount. So we've put together a Loki fit that can do all of the superior sleeper cache, so we're gonna actually dive into the bonus room, the archive. Oh, we got some sentries now. Okay. So we'll overheat these, hack this, and act like it's no big deal. Yo, where is it? I need, the, I need to get it. I'm gonna die. Oh my god. Yes. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Not that way. Not that way. You need to get the f out. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm gonna die. I'm dead. Oh my god, my health. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god, I have 400 health. I tried to warp through the thing and got caught. Oh my god. That was one of the coolest things I think I've ever done in EVE. It was... It felt a, a little trivial, but that's only because I've had so much experience hacking, I think. And I knew what to expect. But going back in, I didn't know what to expect. And I was so freakishly close to dying. You cannot just glance at local when you hack in there. You have to just bum rush the site and get out. You almost have to just ignore it, I think. Pretty fascinating. 150 mil? I mean, that seems crazy low, but... Now I understand how this works. You kind of just glide through it. There's nothing to it. Kind of cool. Okay, so that's probably gonna be the last time that I log my scanner out in space to save a few seconds in K-Space because I just logged a bunch of characters in and <laughs> I was logged out in space. Didn't even notice. I just got picked up by a Tusker. Pretty funny. That's gonna happen every time you do that, so no surprise there. It's kinda sucks it was a pacifier. It's a really annoying loss. But the good news is, we didn't lose the juicy pod, and we don't really... I mean, the pacifier is fairly cheap, right? 
no big deal. Okay, I'm gonna narrate over the top on this one because it was so funny. So I stumbled upon these two prospects and I tried to lasso both of them, but they were stabbed and I ended up losing both because I didn't put all my guys on one. Bad mistake. We'll try not to repeat that in the future. But what makes this such an awesome clip is, well, I actually end up catching him again. We have his prospect here, and he brings a hound to back it up. I guess he thought he was going to bait me. And what I realized very quickly is that, I mean, our ventures are purpose-built to deal with this type of stuff. We can just switch to the hound. What is he thinking? So I immediately switched to the hound, and this is what happens. It's also probably worth pointing out that I have a Proteus on grid, but why decloak it if you don't need it? It just so happens that we're going to need it this time. Interesting. I think that'll probably do it. Hmm. I don't blame him for trying, that was kind of cool. Take the 10 mil though. Okay, so we have a ghost site in low sec, which is a standard ghost site. And what we're gonna do is because now we've done so many of these, we're fairly confident in the mechanics. We understand that the timer doesn't start until you decloak. So let's go ahead and drop a perch since we're gonna be blitzing this. Hey! Oh, this always has this in it, doesn't it? This is like a bonus chest with like fixed loot. It's like the third time we've got that. That's so cool. Love that. I'll test this one more time just to make sure we didn't screw anything up. So we undock in the roar call. We wait, we wait, we wait, we wait. Nothing here push stop, we double click in space, we activate our clone vat, and then we redock. It lets us dock just fine. And this is the clone facility. Okay. So we'll set that up later. Excellent. Pretty good chance he noticed. I guess not. You get him? Hey, I got him. Okay, so I have been in Amamake now for quite some time. Well, maybe not that long, but a decent clip nonetheless. And I've put together uh, blue and red gas, which is Azure and Vermilion, Myco Saracen. I've put together two and a half bill worth of uh, decompressed gas. And what I'm gonna do here is obviously collect all the types of low site gas, but I'm gonna store them in the Orca and move them as I go instead of bringing them back here. Now, this seems trivial to do. You just put them in the Orca, or you put them in the Rorqual, good to go. I keep calling the Rorqual the Orca. The Orca, it's pretty funny. Um, but there becomes a problem, is that you have to actually compress these, right? And you can't compress them in the Rorqual, because you can't tether or dock when you have an Indie Core active, and it's five minutes. That's not going to cut the mustard. So what do you do here? Do you just use a porpoise and hope nobody bothers you? 
No, the answer is no. And we're not going to do it quite yet, but what we are going to do when we want to compress this stuff, we're going to go to our supplies container uh, and our main office over here. We're going to grab this right here. See this? Remember this thing? This control tower? We're going to grab one of these. We're going to set one of these up, put a little bit of fuel in it, maybe a couple strong. Then we're just going to park a porpoise there. We're going to leave the uh, Indy core and the compressor online. And then we're just going to ferry the gas back and forth from the station to the POS over the course of a half an hour and compress everything we need. And then that's how we'll do it. And then we'll pick the POS up and be good to go. Now, this is not ideal, but for us, given what we've done in JSpace so far, this is a walk in the park and virtually no skin off our back whatsoever. So I'm pretty stoked to be doing that. Um, now, the only thing that remains to think about is moving the Rorqual around. And we will get to that once we finish off our blue and red gas. We're gonna try to get 37,500 of each gas. Comes. Here he comes. Well, never get away from me. <laughs> Does he want to say anything? All right, I guess you die. <laughs> Classic. Hey, what the hell? There's just this random piece of debris in Anamake. I'm sorry, in Anamake on the Var gate. There's a random singleton piece of debris, and I just jumped through that gate and was too close to it. The cloak. There's only one. Look, it even tells me, look, 751, a, co a couple seconds ago, your cloaking sisters, there's only one large collardable object here. <laughs> what the fuck? That's so wild. Alright, so we are going to test something that involves use of a ship that isn't a prospect or venture with our mining fleet. Now, what that actually means, and to cut to the chase, is that we're going to be boosting our setup for the first time ever. Now, there's a reason I haven't been boosting. Even though with, with three guys, boosting is a net positive if you do it right. The reason is because I've been using Tech 2 scoops with throwaway setups. But I've learned that in low sec, there are often these incredibly quiet systems that nobody will bother you in. So to that effect, what I've basically done is adopted the same style of boosting that you'd use in JSpace to spin a cloud with a Bifrost or Magus and applied it to low sec. And really, all this does is this allows us to use, now, take a deep breath, this allows us to use Syndicate Scoops. This is the only case I've ever found where it makes sense to use them. You have nobody in local, when you have boosting, right? And when you have the ability to just swap them out if somebody does come and start camping you. That's why we carry the Tech 2s with us. So what we're left with is basically this incredibly hyper fast, we're not completely capped off on the boosts, but we do have quite a lot. And what we're left with is three prospects that mine incredibly rapidly with no waste at all. And we can power through these sites faster than ever, which is great because downtime is coming soon. So 
Just wanted to show off that there are cases where I want to use the syndicate scoops, but in order to comfortably use them, a lot of things have to be true. Yeah, this has been quite nuts, and this will be my last red gas site. I have mined all that I want to mine, and what we'll have to do is because the red and blue gas spawns mostly together in here, actually, right here, we have to go out to Molden Heath next. So we're going to fly out from Hymatar to Molden Heath, and we're going to start looking specifically for the blue gas because it spawns just in there, no red in there. So we'll be making circuits around the heath and trying to pick up the rest of the blue gas. And because the heath is a circuit, we probably won't be using the syndicate scoops too much, but I just wanted to show off that we do have a use case for them, and it's pretty hard to screw it up when all things are considered. Okay, so this is pretty interesting. I've never seen a ghost site in, low, in high sec before. It's a lesser. I wonder how many cans are there. Okay, look, it left the can again. I think we figured this out. We'll hack that can. Super cute. Oh, really? Really? Oh, come on. What the fuck? It just kicked me off. It's gone. It's gone. That can is long gone. Oh my. Oh, it's still here. Yes. Lucky. So let's just hack this before I find a creative way to f*** this up. My internet's really not having a good day, apparently. Nothing in it. <laughs> And now, for the masterpiece. We don't actually have to fly at full distance, do we? We can just teleport there. Hell yeah. We saved a total of 10 seconds. Huge worth. Got a little standard ghost site here. Low sex variety. I really love that. I think I'm gonna get a sample every time. There's the blue chip. Damn, those are sick actually. I just wonder if you should just take the top can. Since it's like 70 mil every time. Okay, so ultimately the syndicate scoops, not really necessary. Um, so far, this Azure, Myco Saracen, it's still pretty plentiful. We've managed to secure quite a lot of it in the Molden Heath. Uh, with a little static and but there are people that are darting around since it's a circuit people do come and go So it's really helpful to have the ventures um, With this sweet new skin It's helpful to have these because you know it gets rid of a lot of the riffraff that comes and wants to kill your prospects uh, Most people aren't gonna want to kill ventures and if they do they're not gonna get through a, a uh, magus with um, you know, hybrid ventures and stuff. Like, I have five newts right now. <laughs> it's kind of funny. And quite a lot of drones, so. Yeah, long story short, I don't think we'll need the syndicate scoops for the blue gas, but I suspect when we start getting to the higher value gases, um, yeah, I, I don't know what to expect, but I kind of suspect that there will be more competition and the people will be better and I'll have to maybe fight for sites. And for stuff like that, we're gonna wanna use syndicate scoops just so we get every last drop out of the site. Um, it's either that or we're gonna use tech one scoops. No tech two scoops for the valuable stuff. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. So one of the absolute coolest part about sleeper caches is that you can tell if somebody's been in one, and you can also tell if somebody hasn't been in one. So if the portal is spawned, it means somebody has broken the seal and possibly gone in, right? So here we wandered upon a limited, and there was already a rift up, which means somebody hacked it. 
so you need to be cautious. Alright, so this is ridiculous. Now I have two superior sleeper caches in a dead end system in the middle of Molden Heath and nobody's in local. Which means I can pretty much just go in here and enjoy it. Because I can watch the shockwaves. <laughs> this is just pretty funny actually. Okay, shockwaves coming in 15. Oh, we're getting hit by the ruins. See that? I don't think we can even get that last one. I think I'm just gonna bail actually. That's funny. Cap management. Pretty mill. What? <laughs> so crazy. The loot is sus in these. Okay, so I have spent the better part of a week in mold and heat. And the point of coming here was to pick up the rest of the Azure that I wasn't able to get in Hymatar, in Metropolis. And the reason I couldn't get it in there was because it was mostly um, Vermilion. It seemed like the Azure was lesser. So what I did was I walked from Amamake to Tiana Sud, which is at the tip of Molden Heath. And I simply just did a little, a little jump here from Amamake over here to Tiana Sud over here. It's, it's like a couple jumps through high sec. So instead of moving the Rorqual, the Rorqual is still staged here. I'm still firing reactions and enjoying the uh, base set up there in Faction Warfare, but I've also sent a crew of gas miners and hackers out to Tiana Sud, and I've been running the heat. So anyway, long story short, here's the deal. I've managed to get uh, 26,000 Azure Myco Saracen, um, which is a fair amount, especially considering this gas isn't worth that much compared to other ones. And it's still one and a half bill. It's kind of nice. Um, we found one ghost site, a low sec, and we got the chip from it. So it's 100 mil there. And then we found an absolute ton of sleeper sites. I feel like the guys that live out here just don't run them. So we've been able to get another one and a half bill from just sleeper site loot. And most of that probably comes from this blue loot. Yeah. So it almost exclusively comes from this blue loot. But I like collecting this stuff. This comes from the final room. And of course we have all these blueprints and some of them are worth a little bit. Now processing all these for profit, not on the menu for a long time, but point being, you know, we've got three, three and a half bill worth of stuff here easily. And what we'll do since we don't have the luxury of just being able to throw all this gas in the Rorqual, since we're on like a little side quest, we're going to send our deep space transport and our porpoise to Tiana Sud, which is again only seven quick jumps away through high sec. And we're going to compress the gas in high sec and then grab all of our loot. And from there, it's really simple. All we have to do is use downtime to pull our two ships back into Amamake safely, which we'll do in an hour and a half. And then we will be ready to leave the area which is incredibly exciting. This is the first official move on the adventure we're gonna do. We've we've moved a bunch to get out here, but we didn't really have a plan. So this is excellent. This is kind of like the first leg completed. We're gonna move to somewhere new and see new people because we've got pretty intimate with the people out here so far. I have a good idea of who's out here and what they're doing. So yeah, let's uh, get these guys over to Tiana suit, and then we will grab our stuff and see where we're going maybe tomorrow. So the east is, well, familiar to me, and the gas is not worth much, and there's not really that much foot traffic in a lot of the areas that aren't faction warfare. But what about the north? To me, the north is the heaviest traffic, and there's golden Michael Saracen up there, and some amber, and lots of scary people, and bridges to scary places, so we're going to check that out next.
Okay, so now that I've had a lot more time to relax with the Rorqual, kind of get a feel for the ship and get used to moving caps again, I have really just started off this journey and I'm a quarter of the way through and now I need to do some moving. We're gonna go from Amamake all the way up to Black Rise. And we're gonna do a couple jumps up there. We had the option of going to Ignoiton here, but the system's a little scary for me. I'm an inexperienced cat pilot and I really don't want to get fragged there because I bounced off of something. So instead we're gonna take the long scenic chill routes and it's gonna be nice and relaxed. And there's the Rockwell. Go ahead and make sure to dock it real quick. There we go. Now on this guy, I like to set the destination and turn autopilot on, but the noise might get annoying if you constantly hear her try and fail to dock. So just remember to dock it later. You can also log it out and it'll warp off when it's done. But all right, so we have the Rorqual here in the midpoint. Awesome, one of the two midpoints. And inside of the Rorqual, we have like our whole life. We got our hacking ships. We have our Jackdaw, Mining Magus. We have all the gear for that. We have all of our sleeper loot. We have all of our gas we've mined so far. And this is just so sick to me because I have nothing left in Amamake. That's it. I just moved everything I own out. <laughs> I just love that. So what we'll do is we'll wait these timers out and then we will do a couple more jumps, keeping a close watch on our fuel. And when we get to our destination, we will uh, take another look and start getting to work again. Stop the ship. We're definitely gonna lose Avenger on this one. That's okay. And we're jumping. Sweet, another one. And so what we'll do once again is we'll set destination to this station on our Sino pilot and put autopilot on. That way if somebody does come and kill us, our pod should dock up pretty quickly automatically, right? Simple enough. Okay, so we are doing our last jump here and it's pretty chill. Just one little scanner boy in the system. Should be no problem. And we're off. Once again. Watch it from this side this time. Hey, Yo, it's such a huge ship. Crazy. And that's how we do it. All right. So I can breathe a sigh of relief. And now we're in the north. So the next thing we have to do is from where we are now, we're gonna have to make a route in Lone Track, or sorry, Black Rise, that covers most of these systems. And then we'll start to get to work and start to get a lay for the land. In EVE Online, exploration is, to put it simply, wandering around and scanning stuff. When you want some content, you hop in your ship, you launch some probes, and you hope to find something neat to do. But what if you didn't have to hope? What if you could all but force content to appear at your fingertips when you want it? As far-fetched as this may seem, this is my reality, and it's thanks to something I'll call routing theory. The main problem with scanning stuff down is more often than not, you end up with a bunch of sites that you just don't care about. This means that when you want to go exploring, you're spending so much time filtering bad sites out and less time doing the tasks that you actually want to do. Routing theory bypasses this filtering process or, at the very least, cuts it down to a minimum. 
It accomplishes this by capitalizing on a simple concept. If you skip something, you can remember it for later. And if you remember it for later, you can skip it again without even scanning it. To run a route is to scan a number of systems in sequence in New Eden, remember what it is that you saw, and then use that information tomorrow. Although many case-based players may already be doing something just like this in their local territories, route running doesn't actually care about where you are. You actually don't need locality. The only thing that matters is consistent scanning of the same systems. This means that you can run routes wherever you want, and as a nomad, this is why I felt like articulating this. This is really important for us. This kind of is what makes this whole adventure possible. What routing looks like in practice is taking, for us, 20 to 50 systems, ideally an entire region, and scanning them down every single day. Since you remember the sites that you didn't do yesterday, you end up being able to fly through the region at breakneck speeds, accumulating the content you want and missing out on all that you don't. Routing theory. It's familiar. And we're gonna take advantage of it. Okay, so now that everybody's in the north, we need to start looking at what we're going to do with the Black Rise region, right? So let's just mark this up a little bit and get a kind of a concept for what we're doing. This is where we are located. This will be our starting point. So let's draw a path. We'll just go down like this, up and around, something like this maybe. Probably not perfectly efficient here. Back, up here. Oh, see, we made a mistake. There's really no way out of this. We'll, we'll revise it later. Okay, and then we come back. So if I was to just do something like this, right, and look at this map that I made with the gas types, up here, we're gonna be focusing on two types, golden and amber. Amber and golden. And I imagine it won't be that hard to fill up on these. So this will probably be a pretty quick leg compared to down here because I had to go to Molten Heath to get the rest of the blue. But we'll see. I, I may end up not finding a lot of amber or golden up here, in which case I'll go to Lone Track. All right, so we have our first amber Myco Saracen site here. And I will say it's pretty exciting. I'm not sure how much it's worth, but it looks like it's worth quite a bit. But anyway, the guy in here, he uses the prospect to kill ventures. And he'll probably make a play on me at some point if I hang out here too long. So we'll probably expect to get some fighting in this region. We'll keep an eye out for it. I've been in this region, Black Rise, for a day and change now, about two days, and I have to say, compared to Hymatar, it's significantly more trafficked. I don't find nearly as many sleeper caches, a lot of the gas sites are either being taken as I get there or are already uh, halfway done. For example, I found two gas sites in Kadama and they were almost completely finished. Somebody just left the bit left. So I'm clearing these up and I'm going to attempt to find where they spawn next, but you can kind of tell that this... Okay, site's gone. Let's boosh off. Oh, I didn't set my speeds right. I'm going to fuck this up for sure. Oh, did I get everybody? Oh, I did get everybody. Nice. So this region is a lot more hostile in the sense that there's more explorers out here. Way more people doing gas out here. And of course we have uh, snuffed out, I kind of hang out here. And so like these three systems are generally pretty busy with people that can kill me, four systems. So it's, it's a different look. It's kind of challenging, but 
I'm pretty sure we can get there. It's just going to take a little bit of tenacity compared to the other two regions. All right, this is our first taste of the golden stuff on this adventure. We've seen a couple clouds, but we haven't really taken a bite out of any of them for various reasons. But that changes now. The only thing that's killing me about Black Cry is beyond snuffed being here and more competition is it's it's just harder to get my ships. I think I need to like relocate where my stuff is within Black Rise because Tescanin, I'm not sure it's working for me very well. We'll see though. We'll give it another day or two before I decide to move around. But um this whole jumping 16 times to get a small gas cloud is like not fun. I'm really sure what I'm looking at here. The most random widow just farming. There he goes. So weird. <laughs> what was that? That was so weird. All right, get all this stuff out of the way. There's a Loki. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Huh. He <laughs> worked out. Pretty rem remarkable. I'm guessing they won past me to get in here. I didn't notice. Okay, after refitting rigs on the Magus, I just had the realization that hyperspatials are incredibly important for this play style. And I've always known that. I've always loved them. However, with the amount of flying I'm doing in Black Rise, back and forth and back and forth, I think I'm gonna splurge and buy a huge stack. Actually, I think I already have like a stack of 50. Tech 2 hyperspatials for small ships. That way, when I repackage my ships, I'll always have extras. I think I'm just gonna put them on all my stuff, ventures included. The, well, I guess the only problem with the ventures is I'd lose some tank. But. Either way, for prospects, I'll definitely use hypers if I'm not already using them. And for the Magus, absolutely. It's going to save so much time. Okay, so check this out. We found a fresh golden Mako Saracen site. And it's, of course, the small one. It's not the big one. That would be dreamy, but start a little timer. And why are we starting a timer? Because we're using boosts and wait for a syndicates because this is a dead system. This is the plan, right? If there's nobody here, we're free to use syndicates. With the syndicates and the boosts, it's gonna be nice. Of course, syndicates do deplete clouds at the same speed as tech two, it's just we get more gas in our pockets. That's really the whole thing. Okay, so let's get out of here. Get ready for the hackening. Just make sure this dude's not about to pop in here. All right, we out. Set. Okay, so I have a bit of a problem and that is I can't get this paint on the right monitor. Okay. That was a bit of a struggle there for a second. All right, so here's my problem. Currently in Tuscanen, all right? 
we're here. But the problem is this constellation is pretty heavily guarded by Snuffed Out. And I will be honest, the guys are pretty good. I've been paying attention to what they're doing and I have no business really trying to compete for that gas unless I want to take a bunch of losses and waste my time. So I kind of stopped farming here. It's too much hassle. The problem is I'm here, which means that this constellation to my right is no good. And this is high sack, which means that in order to get to these three good constellations, I have to go all the way around and it's really annoying because unless something's in here, I usually don't bother with it. So what we're going to do is instead of crying about it, we're going to make some adjustments. We're going to go from here to either here or one of these systems in here. That way we can go from here into high sec. We can pop into the back pocket and we can also hit up this more quiet pocket. We have so many more options because right now what happens is I find stuff back here when I'm scanning and then I have to lug my whole freaking crew all the way out there. It's so annoying. <laughs> So I'm gonna try to move. I'm bringing a Sino out to this constellation right now. The time is now. What could go wrong? It does make me nervous. All right, we, we made it. So all these low sec ghost sites have really left an impression on me and I can't help but think about them frequently. I mean, if there's a fifth can that spawns above every single low sec ghost site, and in that can there is a blue chip that is 70 to 80 million 100% of the time, that might put the expected value of a low sec ghost site even higher than all of the other ones. Something to think about. Well, you see, out here, clouds are something like the oil of old. Finite, lucrative, the subject of much to do. And, as it goes, blood is shed in vain. You want a cloud all to yourself? You won't need to bring a six shooter. I'd say that's about uh, 40km radius to start with. Just eyeballing it. Neat. Now, technically, we would just fly right back in there. For these standards, I think next time I find one with... I don't know. I don't know if I'm at the point yet where I want to start foregoing loot for ganking people, but I'd like to get there. I think that'd be really neat. Maybe a bit more. Because I feel like you'd have to leave all the boxes kind of thing. And then trigger it and then that would get people to come in. Or you'd have to put a valuable ship in here. So as I run these routes in low sec, I've noticed something pretty remarkable. I noticed that Pathfinder was really overkill for what we're doing. And we have uh, made our own mapper, so to speak. And that's fine, but it's also a bit overkill for what we're doing. So what I've kind of done here was I've started from scratch in terms of making a program that suits my own needs. And to do that, I've put together a simple route-based signature tracker. 
And how this works is you can go into Eve and you can import this route here with copy paste. Then you simply just pull it into my program here. And then once it's in, it lines them up horizontally and you can scroll through them. And then from there, it's very simple. You just like Pathfinder, copy paste. But instead of control V and Pathfinder and setting up all these options that you have to do to get it to prune, you just click on the system that you want. It does all the work for you. It updates the timer, it narrows the th things down as you've scanned. It'll put a question mark next to things that you haven't scanned and it'll note down the particular sites that you want to, to find yourself, okay? So with this route, I'm calling it routed right now, but I'm sure I'll have another name for it later. The whole point of this is to strip down Pathfinder for what I'm using it for right now and to just use the bare bones features. So now we should be able to go through our routes and then have just a more simple uh, understanding of what we're doing. Yeah, I'm gonna work on this router and maybe by the end of this episode, I'll have something that's fairly cool looking. Um, right now, most of the functionality is already there, you know, we're basically just importing clipboards and parsing text and arranging objects. Not that bad, but yeah, really excited about this. I think this is really cool. And if you'll notice, we actually have a sleeper cache and a nebula in the site. So probably go take care of that. All right, let's see if we can break his tank at least. We break his tank, that's the million dollar question. He dropped a gas. We're gonna go scoop the gas. There it is. Okay, a little status update here. We've been here for some days now and we're about a third of the way through. We have a billion of each and we're chilling. And as far as sleeper cash loot goes, I mean, at this point, it's pretty difficult to tell how much we're making stop but it's it is fun to watch it stack up and you can see the blue loot constitutes almost all of it but anyway we'll uh, keep chipping away at the gas and hopefully eventually we'll finish up here and from that point do another move easy peasy so this is really where the magic happens in terms of routing okay because if you look we have the route we built yesterday you can see the work we did yesterday with the timer on it. You see a thousand minutes. But crucially, as we go through, look at this system, QPW, Z, Q, Z, they're already here in Marteau, which means that we get to skip through this entire route at breakneck speed. And this will be confirmed because last time you'd see in between each one, you'd see a couple minutes. Now it's just gonna be one minute or so, depending on where we're at, so. Let's watch again real quick. So we're in EHA. We copy these. We paste them in EHA. Look, only one signature we have to scan. The TVH one. So you just ignore others. Zoom in. Give it a quick scan. And we'll grab this. And then you go to EHA. Paste it in. Boom. It's all cleared. Go to the next one. See how you're only in each system now for like a split second? This is how... This is exactly how routing works, and this is why it's so strong. I mean, for people that actually play EVE and like live in an area, they're going to understand this to just be an advantage of living somewhere, right? A locality perk, if you will. But this is more than that. This is basically the, the core tenant of routing, right? We copy this, and we go to here, and we paste it in Inia. We have NZG. See that? So now we find NZG, scan that, we'll update that. And we're not gonna go through the whole thing, obviously, but I just wanna really just emphasize 
that this is the core of the routing philosophy is if you keep hitting the same route day after day the amount of scanning you have to do is extremely low you get to skip so many things and this is really emphasized in faction warfare areas which is kind of what we're sticking to because of all the crazy silly stupid sites that show up that nobody cares about you know so we go to India and we paste it and it's cleared and we just keep going all the way through and we clear and eliminate all these until we find some content so there's this damn procurer here not sure what his deal is It was like AFK, like right here. I don't know what that was about, but if he's still AFK, I'm gonna just warp to him and kill him. so cool the speed too which I caught on pretty remarkable oh my, were my drones on attacking that's good That was pretty nuts. I love how this looked. I like landed and like just immediately started bopping. That was crazy. The way that the asteroid feels look now. Is this the new gas? Oh, is this the new gas they're talking about? Dude, this is sick. Look at that. Jeez. Oh, shit, he was begging. So I just thought for a long time about my hacker character, the uh, the main right now, and what I'm doing with them, and I've come to the startling realization that I believe the metamorphosis might be better for the sleeper sites than the Astero, and not necessarily because it's better pound for pound, but because of utility purposes, right? Now on the Astero, it does move a little faster, has more slots, it can build a better tank, it has a better offense. It's really better in almost every way except for an extra high slot, which we're not even going to use on the meta, so it's totally irrelevant. But there is one thing about the Astero that's really lacking in my opinion, and that is, if we hop in it, give it a second. If we go into the Astero here and we look at the way this is set up, we're left in a scenario where we pretty much have to work with an all-in-one fit because if we go into supplies and we put a mobile depot in here let's just say we put i don't know like just a, a couple of mods in here look what happens to the cargo bay see that and what happens is sometimes because i like to collect all the loot it fills up to capacity and then you end up picking this up to refit after you refit you don't have enough room you have to leave stuff behind and it's kind of annoying all right not a huge deal but mildly annoying now the other thing is that the ship obviously can't be nullified no big deal we're in low sec but there's one very vulnerable period of time when you're doing sleeper caches i'm sure people realize this and that's why i'm giving it so much credit but the entry point into the site itself that little spatial that little strange rift that comes out of the hyperflux generator that you can get caught on fairly easily even if you are trying to go through it as quick as possible so what i've been thinking is that i need to run a warp core stab on the astero when i'm entering the site and then refit out and that leads us back into the whole refit problem with the space okay so 
That leads us to the metamorphosis. Now, this ship came out and I've had plenty of thoughts about it. I thought the scan deviation bonus, which is best in class, pretty fascinating. This is best in class. There's no other ship with that. I thought that was pretty cool. But crucially, what's amazing about this ship is that it has a built-in warp core stab like a venture. Which means that you don't necessarily even have to put a stab on it for it to be able to enter the site relatively safely. Get past most ships, right? You can make this sub two seconds, just like an Estero with two mods. It uh, can form a fairly decent tank, given it's very, very, very limited slot capacity. But here's the part that's awesome, is that we're able to refit on this ship in the field because we have all this cargo space. Wait a second, it's less cargo space than the Estero, you say. And that's true. Estero has 210. Here we have 200. But here's the thing. Metamorphosis has a mobile depot bay. So you can put the depots in the bay and that doesn't take out of your cargo room. So what that allows us to do is to carry mods to refit into without tapping into our space. And we never have to worry about picking up the depot without enough space and then dropping stuff. So we eliminate that whole little dumb metagame. Minigame, metagame, <laughs> metamorphosis, so. Yeah, we're gonna try this out for sleepers in the future, and I think the Estero, since it's more nimble and it can get faster and it can put up a better tank, but the cargo bay suffers from the mobile depot problem, I think this is gonna be our ghost site hacker. And we're simply gonna blitz ghost sites with the data analyzer too, and the guest X type, and go back to what we were doing before. So, yeah, we'll try out the uh, metamorph metamorphosis here too, pretty soon. Now, last thing, real fast, the civilian Gatling autocannon, that is for standard sleeper sites in case um, I have to shoot the Enclave because I screwed up. So that's all, the only reason that's there. I don't know if we'll die. Oh, there's a Tengu. We out. Run. <laughs> if he has the wherewithal to warp off in time, he's not going to expect the damage from this range. Got some decent health though. <laughs> Gonna have to warp. All right, now he notices. There you go. Okay, so this is a pretty huge change that we've just made. And we kind of got to go over why we did it. Let me log out, it'll be easier to see. We've swapped out the Proteus, which the Proteus is not bad out here, but it's very expensive and I haven't lost the Proteus in over a year, so I'd hate to lose it in low sec of all places. Um, and it is overkill, straight up. So what we've done is we've gone with our Nemesis again. However, we're not gonna use nearly as janky of a fit as last time. But it's still going to be the insta tackle kind of nemesis, no bomb launcher. So. so, this is designed to kill those prospects and those ventures we keep seeing. All you do is you warp to the cloud at 30 and you slow boat next to them, or you warp to the cloud at zero and you simply just get decooked by the cloud and then just burn at them, target them instantly, and hit them with a thousand scrams and kill them with a paltry 100 DPS. Um, and then it has hyperspatials, which allow us to fly around and get to these guys on time because they finish the clouds rather quickly and it's annoying to get there and they're gone, so. Okay, so we have a really phenomenal example of the routing system at work. So if we look down here, this is where we left off yesterday. You can see it's been like 11 hours, 12 hours since our last scan there. And 
we go all the way to the top, we started today at Kanaka and we banged through and we've scanned maybe under 10 SIGs total. And this whole time we've immediately found a fresh free cloud nebula. So it took us under 20 minutes from logging in to being in a fresh nebula. So this is really what routing is all about. Okay, so this is a really cool little moment for me. And I was resistant on doing this for a while, but I just love the way it feels and it's just great. So let me cut to the chase. We have just bought all of this gas scattered all over the region. Okay, it's 18,000 units. Puts us at just about where we need to be for our goal so we can leave Black Rise. We paid market price for it, we didn't get a discount, and we actually have to go and collect it all. So it seems like a bit of a wash, why would you do that? Well, the reason is simple, because I realized that there were a few people that were willing to go into the snuffed area to get the golden, and I really wasn't one of them, because it would be really annoying. So instead of fighting that, or going to Lone Trek, and doing high set gas and competing there, I thought about it and realized, why not just Take the people that I notice have been in local and around and find the ones that I've been stealing the gas from and see if they have gas to sell me and sure as they do. So what happened is I messaged some people and most people had nothing, wanted nothing to do with me, but this one guy in a system while I was doing a sleeper cache said, quote, here, let me show you the quote. He said, Gas is hard to find lately, don't know why. And, that, and I said, sorry about that. I realized that I was taking the gas from these guys and they actually realized that I was here and that I was ruining the region for them. They couldn't find gas. Of course, I was leaving the gas in the Southwest where Snuffed was, but that's all they could huff. So that's what they got. Long story short, I decided to buy it from them. Now that's weird. Why would you buy it? But think about it. I'm actually not here to make profit. I'm here to just have a good time and to collect gas. And if subcontracting alpha players like this saving me time and efforts and really just creating a story i mean this guy gets to do omega now he gets to go and play omega now because of this sale think about that how cool is that all right so if you ever wondered how to compress about what is that 700,000 plus M3 worth of gas when it's in low sec. There's a bunch of ways you could do that. You could transport it out. You could jump it out. All I did was load it in my prospects and bring it one system over into Onaman because this is ISAC, right? And what we can do out here is just literally undock the porpoise, stop it right where it stands. And then just let the industrial core run. And we just watch for ganks. If everything comes, we just dock up. There's like already guards here and, sh and sentry guns. Man. I feel like that would be a tough sell to kill this thing. Okay, so there's actually nobody in Kanaka right now, as of like a minute ago, so I'm gonna send a prospect or two through and see if I can just pull my porpoise in right now. Just save myself the pain. Ah, yeah, there's a few people. The catalyst. I think I'm just gonna pull it in right now. Yeah, I'm gonna pull it in right now, for sure. Ready? I'm going. There's just not enough people here for it to matter. So we micro cloak trick it to the office. You cut the cloak when you're at three quarters. And then you dock. And then these guys go through as well. And he docks. Yeah, it's pretty easy to get the porpoise through low sec stuff as long as there's not like a, a bunch of guys right there that have a chance to decloak you while you line out. That's it. So what we'll do is we'll pull the porpoise and get all the gas in here and then we'll have one final task here in Kanaka and that is folding all of our stuff down into the Rorqual. So we'll get to that later today. Okay, I'm kind of shook over that one. I just talked to this guy from Belarus 
I thought he was Russian. I made a mistake, but he properly identified me as a scout for gas. Look at this. They know I'm a gas scout just by my week and a half in Black Rise. They figured that out. Super smart, honestly. Like, obviously I'm doing more than just getting gas, but they identified that when this character shows up, somebody's going to come contest that gas cloud. <laughs> Dude, that or they have my corporation marked, but either way, kind of cool. That's That kind of made me smile. Like, we have a group of people that recognize my scanner as a gas herald. <laughs> I love that. It's like a mythology. So that was the north, and it wasn't exactly what I expected, but close enough, and I feel like I had a fair amount of success there. You know, we didn't really have much trouble finding the things we wanted. But now we're going to move our journey one more time. To the west. Galente space. Specifically, Placid. All right, so we have a pretty decent Sino spot. That's the edge. That's the thing. We're between the edge and the thing. We got plenty of leeway. So nobody in local. All that's left to do is jump. Put the isotopes in the bay. Don't forget to do that. And over here, we'll go ahead and light the Sino so I don't have to think about it. Set Desto and turn on autopilot. Now this guy... And all of his wisdom is simply just going to jump. No big deal. And we're paying quite quite close attention. Oh, somebody just came. Look at that. It's alright. We're fine. Same time, we're going to log on some other people just in case he gets frosty. And dock up. We did another one. Very nice. Alright, I think I have a feel for this. And homie's not bothering us, so I think we're good. Alright, so if we let us get to the edge of the thing... Oh, we might even go out of it this time. Look, we're almost out of it. Nice. This one might actually work. Oh, this one's gonna work. Look at that. Did we stop? Oh, because we stopped too early last time. Who the hell is this guy? Right, let's see if we can do it quickly, quickly. So thing on, station selected, jump, 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 pay, pay, pay. What happens? Look at this. Yo. Look at that. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. You just straight up summon your guys to your Oracle if you have a clone in them. That's nuts. Pretty safe, too. The only thing that really gets you is a disconnect. That's it. So sick. I love that. Alright, so we have just reached Placid, and we are on our first route when we're about three jumps in, and we found a triple cloud Celadon site, and this is by far the most valuable gas I think we've ever mined. Um, it's like double, or it's like triple Fullerite value for M3. So... It's like one mil a cycle. I'm doing three cycles every 20 seconds. So you can kind of do the math on it. Actually, it might even be lower than 20 seconds. Yeah. Every 17 seconds, I'm getting three mil. <laughs> That's valuable gas. Is that a blue chip? All for us. Well, I... Uh... I don't mind if I do. Let's go ahead and take that. You know, I think this is our first Viridian Mycoceracin. 
I've never had delicious minty cotton candy before. That's pretty fun. It matches the cloud ring as well. I love that. <laughs> awesome. Most of us capsuleers play this game in a single mode at a time. These modes, for the sake of this discussion, include being a carnivore and an herbivore. Carnivores are those who do PvP for fun or profit and might include block militaries, pirates, and gankers. Herbivores, on the other hand, are more varied and include explorers, miners, ratters, PI, traders, and all those types of people that generally don't pack a gun. Capsuleers generally min-max into one of these two roles and try to play that role. For carnivores, they tend to maximize their odds of getting a kill quickly. For herbivores, they tend to try to be slippery and make it hard for carnivores to get their kills. This relationship is perfect, but it's not necessarily comprehensive when you look at it top down. Enter the Omnivore. The Omnivore plays both of the aforementioned roles simultaneously, albeit at a lesser amplitude. Crucially, they are satisfied with both ends of the spectrum. In EVE, being an Omnivore has so many advantages, and it's something we've ascribed to for a while now. Perhaps the most obvious example of our Omnivore backbone is our hybrid ventures, those little mining frigates with teeth. But it goes deeper than that. Think back. When we hack sites, we almost always have military units cloaked on grid, ready to respond. When we find trade routes through Anoikis to Jitta, we also treat them as hunting grounds. Our boosting ship has a ton of escape utility, but can also function as a coherent combat ship. Perhaps the most compelling part for me is that omnivores probably have a better overall experience in the sandbox. Almost every single instance of PvP in my series was the direct result of me simply hanging out and working on a PvE task and somebody walking up and making a mistake. But it's not enough to simply switch back and forth between these two modes, and Omnivore is both at almost all times. Being an Omnivore is a choice we make when we plex our pilots and fit our ships, not when we're out in the field. It is my opinion that being an Omnivore opens capsuleers up to meaningful, opportunistic PvP between sessions of collecting PvE loot, which allows you to do more of both. Being omnivorous and nomadic all but eliminates situations that would otherwise be impossible to deal with. And that's awesome. Seneca scoops. Let's do them. There we go. He had Cindy's. No way. No way. No way. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god, no way. What the fuck? All right, well, we have ourselves a big green cloud, big. Iridian Mycoceracin cloud. Just three of the two Ks with the beautiful Verge vendor in the background. Or if you spin your camera, cloud ring, which matches the gas. I just thought that was so cool. So we're using syndicates. And uh, we should get through this in a little over an hour. Assuming nobody crashes our party. Am I not close enough yet? Nope, not close enough. There you go. Alright, 
Let's try out this strategy. Taking some hits, nothing crazy though. Hey, okay, nice, we did it. So, I almost just want to see what we can tank. You know? Let's just check, check the tank. Wait, can we just ignore... Wait, can we just ignore the, uh, the guns with this setup? Oh, no, we can't. Oh, my gosh. No, we definitely cannot. <laughs> definitely can't. Alright, well, we're both in pack. That's funny. There he is. He's at zero. Holy crap. He really is. Is there a chance I'm gonna land on him in time? Oh, sh**. There is. We got him. Yo. Yo. We did it. Let's go. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, I got out. No way. Ah, he burst jammed me. It didn't work though. <laughs> this is hilarious. He did a decent job. I'll give it to him. Yay, hey, we did it. Alright, so this is an interesting one. There's a dude solo mining in the dead end system I'm set up in at a gas cloud, and I have the SIG scan down, so I'm just gonna log in the bomber and warp the SIG at 100 and just see if he notices. If he doesn't move, we'll just kill him with the bomber. Gotcha. Bring a little back up just in case. Is he moving? Oh, he's moving now. Okay. Too late, friendo. What if he has Cindy's? That'd be nuts. Cindy's. Oh, I got the gas. I got the gas. Yo, can I scoop it? Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll log on the other guy. Wait, we're we gonna get another one over here. No fucking way. Wait, what's happening? Is this dude just gonna feed now? <laughs> This is so silly. Oh, <gasps> they had Cindy's. What the? F what is happening? What is happening? What is happening? This is weird. This is weird. What is happening right now? What the chicken fried f This is crazy. Well, 
well, this is quite uh, undesirable, I guess we could call this. These are my ventures, and that's a camp. Do I run or crash? I think I gotta crash, yeah. It's just a hyena. Probably has a long point. I don't think it'll stop all, like any of them. We might lose a venture here. Mm, it's just points. There's a web through. One left. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Go. Aw, oh, yeah. Well, there's a Hakate over here, though. I don't think he'll stop us, though. I don't think he'd want to tank the gate guns. Yeah, he's cool. Well, that was scary. Alright, so I just want to point out a little bit of progress we've made. I haven't really worked on it so much as I tend to do in bursts, but we've kind of reorganized the routing software that we've worked on, and we've made it more compact, we've got rid of things we don't need, um, and basically we use an auto hotkey script to keep it always on top. You can do it with DLLs as well. And so now it's almost like a module within EVE. So now I have the probe scanners over here. And over here I have a permanent record of them, even when I log out. And this keeps track of where things are, independent of my bookmark scheme. So this would be like taking Pathfinder and putting it over your window as well. So there's there's no, no harm, no foul in that. So, But it's going to be really nice to have it compact like this. So I have less managing across the monitor and basically... Just a more seamless exploration routing experience. So, yeah, we will uh, keep working on it, and one day it might be a mainstay in our gameplay loop. So I can kill both. Got the drone. I gotta watch my cap now. He's literally, literally trying to slingshot me. This is epic. We got him. Sweet. Just cleaning up some Viridian. Michael Saracen's extremely busy faction warfare system. And these guys, where are they? These guys like to gank the miners, so they just killed a coveter less than an hour ago on one of these sites. So, we're being a little bit careful. Staying alert. They use the Proteus. So. Anyway, uh, this is a really busy fucking system. So people are coming in and out, it's impossible to track who's doing what, so we're pretty much just sitting ducks if somebody wants to kill us, but we're in Ventures and a Magus, so really quite difficult to ruin my day with this setup. Beautiful. There's something we haven't seen in a while, a force field. Wow, cool. Why do we want that? Well, it's obvious. Because we are in a system that is, well, we're quite far from high sec. It would be a bit of a journey. So what we're doing instead is we're using our full brain. All right, we're gonna unwind that. What we're gonna do is we'll put all the gas in here. And then when it's all in there, we're gonna come back and compress it all and wait for the timer and pack it all up and go back. It's always so weird when it shows up. I mean, it just looks so weird. It's your ship appearing, you know? But all right, another successful move. Fabulous. All right, I think we're about to move the Rorqual one system over to Austin Gel. Oh, 
every time it makes me nervous. There he is. Where's he headed? He's headed to this one. Oh, he's gonna fucking die. Got him. Woo! That was that I had to work for that one. He's not happy about it. I should have I should have kept that prospect. I really should have kept that. <laughs> oh well. The kill is nice too. Kind of odd right there. This is Odin. And I'm just chilling up here with like a Loki fleet. Huh. What's up with that? Alright, now I think this is just so cool. We have a nebula here in Hadoobal. And it's forgotten, which I didn't recognize, which means that it's probably not a Mycoceracin, since we're pretty well acquainted with them by now, right? So it's forgotten. That means it's Cyto, which means it explodes when you mine it. I have, to date, not touched one of these yet. Oops. Oh, hold on. Wait a second. Do the low-sex Cytos not do damage? Is that what I'm getting here? Is that what's happening? Hold on. Let me look on the wiki. Interesting. All right, well, this is kind of like a little vacation that we can just close these out. Unlock. That's super cool. We pretty much can just take this for fun. The only problem is it's really low value, which makes me almost not want to do this anymore. I was doing it for the novelty, I'm not going to lie. But, I mean, I guess it would take us a very short time to polish this off, so might as well. All right, so we're gonna try to sneak our porpoise into Austin Gell. Looks like it'll be rudimentary, honestly. Reason being, nobody's in there right now, so what could go wrong? One guy, he's faction warfare. Can't touch the bottom. Sit into a tumble. Waves that shake me out, out of my skin. Never been so easy. Losing my direction. My bearings have me south of home. But I've been wrong before. I was waiting in the undertow Set adrift with fed away like bones Unaware of where my heart would flow I was waiting in the undertow Okay, so I just got here to Solitude, and I'm in the dead-end system. I was thinking about holding up in, and nobody's here. So I almost just want to go for it. We've double-checked the ranges, you know what I mean? At this point, we're just dealing with an issue of safe sinoing. I gotta say, it still gets a little bit of the adrenaline going whenever you move this much esque around, but I think we have a pretty good handle on it. As long as you have a general understanding of how Sinos can go wrong and what stations to look for and the idea that local's empty and you're in jump range and you have all the fuel and blah blah blah. 
it's actually not too too bad so yeah we're gonna take a little bit of time get other get a little bit more stuff down here uh buy some stuff and then uh move a couple characters and good to go we have a little app fleet slash blobs fleet here and this is all scary wormhole people or wonder what they're up to. I mean, I've, I'm not really that experienced or anything, obviously, but I suppose it's just standard if you're a known blobs group to just sit on tether. There's no point in hiding your ships in the station. So they just sit there and they wait for something to happen. Kind of interesting. That's a, that's a skin. Okay, so this region is by far the most challenging one I've had to deal with yet. And I really think we're going to have to go full solid snake here because they have so many people with such a big blobs force that I can't really reliably win any fights at all, which is okay. But it, you know, it forces us to be a little bit more sneaky. And so in order to do that, you have to employ full speed. So we're full escape Magus, full escape prospect. And really, we're using Cindy's for this because we have to get as much gas as possible before they find us. It's pretty much how this works. So we've marked like a bunch of gas sites around the region. And what we're going to do is every time we find they find us at one, we're going to sprint to another one nearby and just start taking more until they find us again. And if they get good at that, we'll split up and do one guy per system. And just play coke games. Either way, we should be able to get something from this region by doing this. It's going to be rough. And I hope that we get mostly purple. Because... If we get purple, we can actually leave Solitude and go south more to, like, Iridia. But if we are unable to get a lot of purple and we get mostly Malachite and Lime, then it's going to be a while in Solitude, so. So, I'm in high sec Solitude, which... Solitude's actually mostly high sec. It's kind of cramped in low sec. But I found a limited sleeper cache, and inside there's an Astero. That you can plainly see. Stealing my delicious loot. Now, my scanner doesn't actually have the ability to contest this in any meaningful way, so I figured why not just pop the force field and have a chuckle at our Astero friend here. And then we're gonna leave. What a strange ecosystem. Looks like he is food. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? It's gonna manage the distance and cap, and we're good. I think we can turn one of these off. Better help our cap. I think that'll do it. See if he has syndicates or not, that would be such a sweet kill. Kids, let's go, dude. You know, I'm not sure this is gonna pan out, but I mean, we're currently in Anki, which is wormhole 
Sorry, Scary Warhol People's headquarters. You can see them in local. And we're clapping up one of their mining frigates. So I'm assuming they're going to send somebody here. Any minute now, they're going to have some defense here. They're not going to let their homie die. No way. All right, they let their friend die, but they're going to get revenge, surely. Okay, yeah, look at all the scrams he had. So I wasn't that far off, but I I can only assume he thought I was an herbivore. Interesting. <laughs> I'm thinking he won't. Fifty mil. I gotta get a thing there. How do I get that? All right, let's pick up the loot now that our venture has arrived. And fifty-three mil for me. And I'll grab these modules I left behind. Could even salvage it, but I'm not gonna because we know we're gonna get like one k for it. <laughs> not worth. Okay, so I suppose I find this interesting. Maybe it's actually not. <laughs> but there are three nebula. That'd be like really close to where I'm stationed in Catalane, right? Right down the way. And this guy looks like he's been chewing on one of them. And I think he has a partner he plays with. The partner is not visible. So basically what I'm doing is... I'm gonna follow him around and make sure he doesn't chew at any of this anymore. And then with my prospects, I'm gonna finish up the high sec gas site. And then we're gonna bring everybody over here and try to ninja what we can out of all this. I, I do believe that we're gonna get it all. I haven't seen scary wormhole people come out here too frequently. Uh, and they're the only real people that can stop me. So, in the meantime, we just watch these clouds, and granted, it's not like we'll get a ton out of this, but what's crazy is next door to this, there is, in Evev, there's a glass nebula, which is 6,000 celadon. So this is like almost all the celadon we need right here. We just have to make sure we secure it. What are you doing, man? Better not have syndicates, that's all I'll say. Dude, this is a bad day for you. What oh, orders here? Syndicate. Oh my god. It's hard to believe these people exist. Sure is starting to look pretty, isn't it? Looks like um, some of the corn you see. North America. Look at the colors. So cool. Especially the way this looks. I think these are huge standouts for me in the compressed form. The uncompressed forms, some of these have a little bit better coloring, but... And that's just beautiful. Love those. Okie dokie. So we're gonna install a couple clones in here. Probably fun. Double click back there, turn the med bay on, configure, invites, chloroquin, accepts. Invite Derma accepts. Invite part of the no accepts. Cool. Now we dock up.
So the West was pretty good to us. I never expected in a million years to get eight syndicate scoops on a leg of an adventure like that. Well, I guess we only got four, but who's splitting hairs? So now that we're done with the West and we finished the North, and of course we started with the East, there's only one cardinal direction left, the South. And the location we've chosen for that is Iridia, the most dangerous region yet. All right, I'm gonna do it. I'm going to do it. Let us do it. Do that. Plenty of room, no bounce possible. And we're lighting the Sino. And we're double clicking. And we're jumping. The Keplinger. Jumps active. We're here. And we're docking. All right, we're good. We're in Iridia. Now, I just want to make it crystal clear. This is such a dangerous portion of my journey. I have to be, I have to be extra careful, rather, when I uh, move my ships around because people here are quite good and they will kill your ships if you try to jump into systems they have no business being at or you don't understand the stations and blah, blah, blah. But we have a pretty good handle on it and realistically speaking, we're not cocky. So we make it. And that's that. We'll set up a few bookmarks. We'll get ready to dock. Keep spamming dock. Log you out. I don't want anybody to even see the character. And what I anticipate is seeing somebody show up for this. Because of the region we're in, I would anticipate there's people watching that. Yeah, if you click Sino Field, you can see people start to pop Sinos up and stuff. Kind of thing. This is also how you can sort of see uh, where people go up here. Emo. Kind of stuff. Somebody will probably come here regardless. I wouldn't be surprised if they had alerts automated for this stuff. We'll see. Here we go. Here we go. They've come. They've come to end me. They're here. <laughs> Look at them. I'd be really curious if they smurf on it. That would be really nuts and something I didn't think about. Huh. See how they just show up though and they just know? They'll probably track that I'm here and stuff. Try to understand why I moved it here. It's a very strange spot. It's just, this is what I'm talking about. Like, these are the type of people that we gotta watch out for now. It's a different ball game now. Like, we've been in pretty public areas so far, but this is very much like a Fife Thumb, a Kingdom, whatever you wanna call it. This is under control by somebody. Hey, finally, some good news. Crimson Nebula. Aw, oh, it's a Saito, crap. We're really hoping that we don't run into mostly Cytos down here. That would really slow us, th slow us. And it's already been tapped as well. Sheesh. Also, there's like totally a cloud there. You see that cloud? I wonder, is this like an actual damaging one? Hmm. Yeah, so somebody definitely cherry picked this super hard. I'm not sure why I'm doing it. Well, that was hilarious. That counts definitely counts but no loot really like literally no loot okay i don't know what the hell that was but i just had a load of rats at that gate i guess it's part of the trig thing 
Dude, that was not fun. They were trying to... The rats were trying to decloak me. Look at this. And they're like looting something. And as soon as I decloaked and started to warp off, they immediately were running at me to try to decloak me. Like this is scarier than a lot of player camps, dude. Depending on their lock speed. <laughs> So admittedly, I'm a little confused as to what's happening here, but this uh, Helix Nebula here, which is a 60k M3 Lime Malik, uh, <laughs> Michael Saracen, can't talk today. Um, it was seemingly guarded by three Los Shania people, two of them out of court, but they're still part of the group. But they left. And even more strange, the guy that's been chaperoning me in the station since I got there yesterday, the guy that's been watching the station, he left as well. So I'm totally unsupervised right now in Losishnaya Iridia, taking a juicy gas site. Now, I understand times change quickly and somebody could come in here right now and shut me out of this, but um, we're kind of in like a dead end. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a chance we might, we might get this, <laughs> you know, there's a chance. There's a station next door in this system too. So we can dump a load, come back, dump a load, come back without drawing attention by going back to the main area. So kind of interesting. This is by far the most strategic I've had to approach this yet. Given the threat level of people we're dealing with. Dude, you see what I mean? This is low sec and they're just gating caps around like it's nothing with a micro cloak trick I don't even think he cloaked it doesn't even matter little blue chip go side here I'm hoping to take this real quick nobody notices give me that 80 mil let's go Okay, so here's the situation. We have that friendly solo player in Fesha right now chewing on a cloud, and really the problem I have with this is I can't let them just take the whole cloud. Like, there's no shot. So what we have to do is to take, is we have to share the site. I could try to kill them, but I really don't feel like it. They were very nice to me. Wow. Not at all interested in coordinating. Okay, well, next time I'll just attack. We'll see what happens here. I'm super stoked to pick up all this Malachite if I can get it. There is a station near at all, but it's, uh, it could be camped. Thankfully, there's two ways into it from this angle, so no big deal. Anyway, we'll keep an ear. If they come back in, we'll let them huff with us. If not, all good. Okay, this is weird. This SIG here? No way! That's so f crazy. Wait, what? So this SIG I watched spawn the second this superior sleeper site cleared out of the probes and it respawned in the same system. No way! That's so crazy! I guess he just wants to f***ing die. I don't get it, man. This is not gonna cut it, man. This is gonna be epic. All right, now we begin the gas wars. Under KM, looking good. Turn back. This just ain't gonna cut it, dude.
Your Lachesis is not gonna f***ing cut it, friend. Oh, I'm shooting the wrong missiles. Shoot. That's why it's not doing any damage. He's like, I'm going to waste your ammo, fool. Dude, you gotta warp. Warp, 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 warp. Oh my god, warp. Warp. Oh my gosh. It did not warp. <laughs> Holy crap. That's incredible. This is absolutely the most stalemated I've ever been over a resource in EVE. I've been looking at this site now for quite some time. Got pings everywhere. Killed a prospect and a venture on it. Shot the hell out of a procure. There's been Lachesis here. There's a Loki floating around. I brought every one of my guys here at one point. I mean, this gas site is popping. <laughs> no way, look at this. No way, this is sick. They brought the whole crew here. Yo, it's crazy. I love it. Oh, I love it, dude. All right, we got the yak door. This is gonna be a nightmare, but I'm gonna try it. Okay, we got the Barker here. It's a big boy. I think the Varger can hit me. That's the problem. But I'm not sure. We should find out, it'd be funny. <laughs> I hit it. <laughs> I could just keep doing that, but I feel like it's a failing plan. I don't know if he can lock me in time. That's the thing. I mean, I'm playing with fire, obviously. We, we realized that, I believe. I think I need to work on my strategy a bit more and have even further ranges available to me. And I think the play for that's probably gonna be the Naga. I think that's the button to push there. And there is the graveyard of my pings. Try as I might to hold the site, I was unable to. Feels bad, man. Had a good time though. 
That was pretty nuts. I hope they're not like too mad over me wasting their time like that, but I feel like I feel like that kind of thing works really well against bad players. They're just not really they're just not bad. <laughs> you know? So I had to give it a shot. Maybe it was disrespectful, but honestly, I'm still learning, so I'm sure they'll get over it. So this one's this is weird, right? I'm not really sure what's happening here. But there's definitely sigils here. There's no force field. So I feel like they have to be in space. Am I missing something? So what this could be is a wormholer who closed it and got rolled out, perhaps. This is fascinating. I honestly think this might just be a wormholer that got rolled out and just dumped the sigils. This looks like a wormhole tag, right? Holy crap, that's exactly what it is. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. I thought I was still going to get proven wrong, but no, this is legitimately what that is. Oh, that's something else, dude. Are you really going to get to be able to just kill these? Oh, this is sick. I'm still waiting to get proven wrong. Like, they're not just sitting there, right? Surely. They are. Holy crap. Oh, he's a brave guy. <laughs> uh, you gotta love it. All right, so a couple things. Uh, we have done some more work on the routing app. It now displays how many systems you have. I did a bunch of fixes. The coloring is now accurate because security system does rounding. It rounds up or down to the nearest tenth. So some of my five systems were actually 0.499 and they were orange and now they're yellow. Fix that. We made these uh, buttons a lot less annoying to look at with random colors and long numbers. Now they just show minutes, hours, and days. Two digits, right? Last thing we did is instead of it saying Nebula, N-E-B-U, for a code, we have actually indicated what's there. So this is Malachite, Mycoceracin, 60,000 meters cubed, right? And so this will show at a glance what's there. Um, and the last thing, I said last thing, but this is last thing, I changed the, uh, the coloring. So when we have a system with target in it, we no longer have the timer change. It's the SIGs themselves that change colors. So it's gonna be a lot more pretty to use. And um, even the camera snaps nicely to the rows and you can't go below and you can't go above. So it's starting to turn into like a real usable app. Now, of course, loading data into it, still a nightmare for an average user, but you know, we made it, so it's not that hard. But now if you look, Erne, this is the system we've been based in, and we have a Malachite Mycoceros in 60,000 M3, which is the big one, right? So we're about to tackle that right now. Now, the awesome thing about this is that this signature just spawned in the last half an hour. And how do we know that? Well, super simple. We, ha we were managing them. Did we grab this SIG 40 minutes ago, and we refreshed the one right next to it that we already grabbed four minutes ago, and it new sig so not only are we keeping track of where they are we're up we're kind of like running a story on to like when they spawn as well absolutely nobody came to stop us we just had one of the local guys fly through but as soon as i noticed he was in a station i switched over to prospects since we have our clear local and he was accounted for um, but then he left, so just a free 60,000 meters cubed gas site. Okay, that's, um, interesting. Where we were in gens. We have a double MAM-20 cloud. Lucky me, I'm just running into everything. I've barely scanned anything today. I spent more time tinkering with 
the app than I did actually scanning. <laughs> kind of crazy. Well, shoot. I get back here as soon as I possibly can, and the maelstrom guy or the material guys here. Bummer. He kind of does keep to himself. So, sorry. Let me rephrase that. He kind of does keep to himself. I'm assuming that he may not sound the alarm. But if he does, not the end of the world. Just need to uh, not die to this guy. If more people join, we'll go get the ventures. And if more people come, we'll back off. Look for more. Okay, because they chased me out of that system and I'm not happy about it, I'm going to kill all their mobile depot or mobile tractor units. And they're fresh too, and I know they're his. That's the best part. Oh, I didn't even launch. Oh, sh. Funny. He's like a rep in it. It's funny as hell. Okay, well, the goodwill, sadly, with this young man is not there today. They basically have called me cockroaches and that I'm uh, petty, I think, would be a good way to describe that. And I basically responded with, I love you guys. And since then, no response, so... So I've been multi-boxing for a while in EVE, and I gotta say, it almost feels a bit like a board game. And as I do, I've overthought that to the point of dubbing this idea board game theory. All right, check me out. We have four accounts we use for this series, right? That gives us 12 characters since just three per account. Now we know that one of our characters is locked in a dungeon in Jitta, and that another generally hangs out in K-Space near the factories or wherever floating around, that leaves us 10 characters we regularly use in the field. Now, you can only have four of those logged in at once, one from each account, and swapping ships on the fly is difficult, especially as a nomad. But I use all 10 characters by staging them around the region or the route that I'm working with, the board, and switching between them as necessary. Board game theory basically entails using multiple accounts and characters to control or exploit a large area. For us, this means securing exploration objectives we like and finding people to shoot that step out of line. How it works for us is by taking advantage of a couple important things. First, a single bomber can stop an entire fleet of prospects. Second, being in two three or even four places at the same time gives us an information stream that renders us near perfect safety. Third, our mining frigate crew can be shuttered down from four to three all the way down to one, which opens up combat characters to camp sites and to spot the mining frigates we are using. In practice, board game theory looks something like us camping a gas site in one system using two mining frigates in another, and scouting in a fourth. We're just moving pieces around a board. All right, so this is pretty dang cool. And this uh, expedition relocate uh, has paid off big, big time here. We have a fresh 60 cloud after downtime. And let me just get my guy on it. Oh, so basically, I'm contesting two clouds in the north of Iridia right now. The same system. Right? I'm here. I'm, or I'm here. I'm contesting two clouds here. Both of these six. SK and MH. They're still here. There's still clouds there. At the same time, I'm using three syndicate prospects 
down in the middle of the region on a fresh big site. So while this guy's sitting here waiting for me to stop camping these two baby sites, I'm just raking in the dough over here, so. Really, I'm kind of confused what this guy's up to. There's so many ways to counter a lone bomber like this, right? You can use ventures, you know? You can use uh, any Lodgy ship. You can use any sniping ship. I, I mean, any defense ship at all stops this. So I just don't know why he doesn't put his Slepnir on the grid with his prospects, and I would just seriously leave. Like, if he did that right now, I would leave. I would leave the system and give my last prospect, so... I'm not sure what goes into the thought processes for them. Maybe they just think I'm scarier than I am. Which is strange, because they were talking a bunch. This guy, not the whole group, of course. I'm insignificant to the group proper, but... Yeah, I don't know. Weird one. Either way, we're, we're definitely uh, moving around the board here. And we're really getting the upper hand pretty much everywhere we go at this point. And pretty much the key is to when they contest the site, you either put a guy there to hold it, or you immediately go to another one, or immediately start looking for a new one. Kind of hard to stop that. Yo, 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 check, 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 check. Do I have a mic? Yeah. I think this is the moment. Lead invite. Quick, he's gonna fucking kill himself. He's gonna kill himself. No way. No way he can kill himself. I don't buy it. There's only three, but that's enough to kill. Oh, come on. You're going to do it or what? There he is. Okay, he's on this guy. I'll pull this guy off. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> he's totally gonna die, dude. Can't believe it. That'll do it. I'll take that. Wonder what kind of loot he has, yo. I'm so excited. Like a good player. What did he have? Oh, nothing juicy. Okay. Your mill, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. Ah, oh, the dark blood didn't drop. That's a that's a legit kill though. That is a legit kill. So these dudes definitely want me. They've brought another smart bomber here. But I've carefully navigated to a ping on the other side of the gate and it should be pretty trivial to get in there, quite honestly. What we do is we do a test run with this guy. Oh, it's pretty easy. They're gonna be really mad about where I am right now. Now we watch. They're not happy about that. <laughs> That's so slick. Look how slick that is. I'm pretty blown away that this guy got his sight taken away. He had three prospects and a gnosis. But he goes and fetches a Loki, and I'm just sitting here waiting for him to reveal. It's been like five minutes or more. He hasn't poked his Loki out. What was the point of getting the Loki? There it is. 
There it is. The problem is, if I'm paying attention, it's not too, too hard to dodge all this. You know what I'm saying? He's going to have to slow boat around and warp around like a fool while I mine the whole time. It's really tough to deal with this, but a lo Loki's the wrong tool to catch ventures, I'll tell you that right now. But I think he just doesn't have the right fit for this, so we'll just keep doing our thing. I think he might be done. He hasn't popped out for a while. Yeah, he needs to bring another ship for this. Look, he's not gonna cut it. So, um. I just noticed local flood. And it's initiative. Right? Uh, CFC, Goon Associates, right? Huge group. Um, and they're taking out this rider right next to where I am. It's on grid with my station that my Rourke was in. It's on grid with the nuts. Oh shit, it is gonna blow up. Oh shit, I need to record this. This is gonna be dope. I didn't know it was gonna blow up. It's like really freakishly close too. Here we go. Okay, let's just do it like this. You know, I really just like these moments in EVE, these living scenes of consequence. I like to watch them develop and appreciate them. sure what I'm watching here. It looks like someone just got caught by, like, faction rats or something. I'm not even sure what I'm watching. It's pretty funny. Look, there's an Ockator here. Damnation. Like, what am I watching? This is hilarious. Is he f or what? <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Get them, little drones. Get them. Get them, little drones. Get them. Oh, they're getting them. Come back, little drones. Woo! Barely got out. Oh, did he live? Did he really live? Oh, man. How come the faction rats didn't kill him? I don't even know. That was silly. Oh, Jesus. Look at all these people. God, they're gonna fucking decloak me. Like, for real.
I think this dude's trying to smart bomb me. That's really clever. I don't think it does enough damage, though. That's a hyperspatial smart bomb uh, praxis. That's pretty clever. It looks just like any other gas site. You roll up with your mining frigates, you pick a cloud, you jump inside of it and fire on your scoops and do a little regroup and start orbiting the cloud at zero and watch as you collect ISK, an opportunity. You watch local, make sure you're safe, you switch ships if you need to, you back yourself up. But there's one thing about this gas site that is a little bit melancholic or somber or whatever. And that is, this is going to be our last gas site of the adventure. That is right. It has been an absolute journey to collect this much cotton candy. But I will say that it's not really... It's not work, you know? It's not a grind for me. It's awesome. You get to hunt these things down and try to sneakily take them or steal them and bully them out of other people or like there's so much tactics involved and it's low stakes enough to where you don't get huge players involved. It's 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 amazing. I, I just love gas in general. And while I love J Space gas because it's serene and abundant and just chill. There's something truly amazing about low sec gas, Myco Saracens in particular. They're scarce. They're competitive. They're valuable. And if you want a variety, you have to travel. All of those things speak to me. I guess I'm not sad that I'm done with this leg because I know I'm going to do more in the future. I know this is going to be a part of my toolkit in EVE. Coming to do Myco Saracens. I've developed quite a skill here. It's feels good. I said it was somber, sad, but no, I'm going to adjust that. I'm going to say this feels really good. I set a goal. I followed through and at no point did I want to quit. At no point was I getting bored. At no point do I not want to do this in the future. It's awesome. I once again find myself in a position where I have to compress gas, but it's not like super easy to do so. If you look at the Iridia map, we go to security. This is our station here. So it's really easy when we're right next to a high sack state or system because we can simply jump into the high sack and then bury the gas in, compress it, and then bury it back and then bring the porpoise back empty. But we're multiple jumps from high sec and I'm not going to cart the porpoise through. It's just not my style. So we're left with using Firna and we're left with really two options as I see it. Three. We'll go with three because I came up with a new one. But the first option would be to go to the station, right? You have the station. What is it? It's this one. And you can see how you can get behind it, right? Here, let's just make this easy. You shoot out from here. You can kind of get over here and compress. And if anybody sees you, you hopefully don't have too much longer on your timer and you can dock and tank them until you dock, right? Now, that does lose to Sinos. You'll just instantly get evaporated by one or two blops. Um, but it's pretty safe, all things considered. Um, the other option would be to put a... Um, Starbase up, and we did this before. You put a starbase up and you just fly the porpoise there and ferry everything to the starbase, just like a high sec, compress it, and then fly the porpoise back. Easy. We don't want to do that because if Losa Shania sees us, they see the force field, they will probably immediately bash it. And then I just lose a stick for no reason. Sure, I'll get all the gas out, but it will attract so much attention that it doesn't even seem worth it. And here's the third option I just discovered. This system is a rather large one. It's not huge or anything, but by virtue of it being case space and there being randomly, well, 
manually placed gates. Look where this gate is, the Kami gate. It's all the way down here. Which means that with a little bit of warping around, you can actually find a far poly in here. And we did. So now I have a far poly in this system. And essentially what it means is we're going to pull the porpoise to the far poly. Then we're just going to compress here. And we're going to go back. And that'll be that. You get more warning if somebody's going to come and get you, right? Because they have to combat scan you after seeing you. And this is really just a wormhole tactic that we've kind of perfected over time. And now we're using in case space. So we'll give that a whirl uh, slowly and surely when local clears up and let you know how that goes. Well, it went pretty well. It was uneventful and not really worth watching, but we're in a position now where we're good to go. Everything's compressed and everything's in the Rorqual. So before we wrap up this lag, I really want to get the Rorqual out of Aridia because having it here is giving me a panic attack. So what we're going to do is move it one system over and then call it a lag and go to the next part. Okay, scary is we're going to do it. Oh my god, I've been so nervous about that. Oh! So nervous about that. Oh my god. Living in the land of people that kill people just like you is not easy. some fuel or our work hole, which is pretty much out now uh, which makes sense because we've traveled an extreme amount of distance right so we're gonna go take the porpoise and run into a nearby high stack system pick up some oxygen isotopes and fill up the fleet hangar and the fuel bay about 10,000 m3 which is more than a couple hundred thousand units of fuel which will get us everywhere we need to go and then so and we stop ship we stop ship and we're gonna wait a couple seconds and then we're gonna jump to Keplinger cool where will he appear I guess here oh wrong side Autopilot on, dock as soon as possible before Shadow Cartel gets here, hopefully log. We want to hide the character name, which again, after this episode, none of that matters, but. Yeah. All right, incoming. This is all of my stuff returning back to Amamake. Gosh, there it is. Awesome. We're safe. All right, so now the worst thing that can happen to me. Double clicking, going to jump. Going to jump. Jump is active. Getting ready to dock. And docking. Three, two, one. Dock. Maybe a little slow. We got in though. Cool. Alright. Okay, so we have pretty much completed this journey in terms of moving the loot around, the value around, right? We're in Amamake. Our blue whale is sitting here. Not really much inside it anymore. See that? Everything's here. So we're gonna do a little bit of accounting and see what we have. And then go from there. The first thing we're going to look at, the most important thing, is the gas we've accumulated, okay? If you look, 
Um, we'll look at the Micro Saracens only. Uh, just like that. Okay, so there's eight of them. And we harvested 30 billion worth. 30 billion worth of Micro Saracens in under two months. Okay? Pretty good. That is pretty good. But the value does increase a lot when you take into account that we've been, this entire time, reacting a lot of the fullerenes we've got. Right? Here's another 20 bill worth of reacted fullerenes, and I can tell you right now, we got another 5 to 10 bill coming. Okay? So you can tell already that we have an absolutely enormous amount of value in the gas and materials itself. What we end up doing with this stuff, uh, we'll get to it when we get to it. You know, we have ideas, but we're not in a rush. The point is we have this huge cache of stuff we can tap into. Okay, well, that's the materials we harvest. What about the hacking loot? All right, brace yourself. This folder contains just the loot I've got from sleeper caches, right? So you see it's just about seven bill, but don't let that fool you. It's worth probably closer to 10 bill, all right? If we scroll through, uh, yeah, look at all these blueprints. See this? Look. It's just so many. And you'll see that most of them are storyline. Okay. These are all storyline. But this huge chunk in the middle, how many do we have? Let's find out. We have 184 polarized blueprints. Oh, no, there's some in here that we don't have. But you can just do the math on it. 170, right? Or, or, or a little less. Some of these are 10 run. Some of these are 1 run. Some of these are three run. Those are the denominations that these come in, right? So we're gonna find a 10 run, there's one. And some of these are worth next to nothing, some of them are worth something. I'm gonna have to sort through and figure out which of these polarized blueprints are worth building, if any. And of course, for the storyline, many of them are not worth much, but some of them are worth quite a lot. For example, there are a few large cat battery. If you look at that, boom. Uh, oh, this one's cheap. I never, Quite cheap. Oh, it's an auction. It's an auction. All right, you can ignore that. 500 mil. See that? So, and we know these are like 50 mil, and we know that this is uh, 100 mil. And these are like 50, and we know we've been through these. I'm just kind of spitballing here, but this is worth right here. These blueprints, at least three to five bill. Calling it now. Okay. So that leaves us with all of this other loot. A lot of it's material based. All this stuff is material based. I don't know why this paste got in here. Let's take that out. It's a mistake. And then you have all of these other like tertiary materials, and then you have all of these meta modules that you find. And you have skill books, 500 mil worth of skill books. I mean, come on, that's awesome. But most of the value from the sleeper site is indeed in blue loot. 5.5 billion worth of blue loot from sleeper caches. And I didn't kill a single rat. That is awesome. Why is that awesome? Because I'm at a stage now where I collect most of the things that I find. So blue loot for me is particularly useful because there's no point in collecting it. We can just sell it for isk. There's no point in collecting it. It is the same as isk. So this gives us a nice source of isk, which is awesome. Okay. So this is the sleeper cache loot. From here, let's go to ghost site loot. All right, so we have 3.5 billion worth of ghost site loot plus the blueprints. Now this is particularly impressive for a couple reasons, Mo notably because we did virtually no null or JSpace sites. After we got going, we did zero. This is all, almost entirely all low sack and a couple high sack. So you're going like, wait, why is this? Why is it worth so much then? You just got like a bunch of wheels and some some minerals. Well, this is why right here, blue chip. 22 blue chips, 2.7 bill, just like that. And these are exclusively from low sec gas or low sec go sites, and they're from that top box. So we're able to farm these now with our routing strategy, right? So this is another huge chunk of isk, and these blueprints, um, they're worth a little bit, not much. We'll have to sort through them, but I anticipate these not being worth anything in the long run. Maybe 100, 200 mil, and everything's said and done. Um, some basic pirate data. We accidentally did some sites. Uh, and then here. Four syndicate scoops, which we picked up off the ground from players we killed. Alright? 
killed a lot more than four, but this is what we've looted. So there's another half a bill right there. So that's the vast majority of the loot that we've got. Now, we obviously have containers full of modules, uh, and we have containers with supplies in them, but this stuff's not loot, right? So we're not gonna count this as something that we've foraged, we've purchased or carted in or whatever, most of this, so. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna probably tear down a lot of this loot. We're gonna start organizing the loot, and, and since we've now accounted for all of it, we're gonna probably, you know, get rid of this, get some isk in the coffers, and start to sort the blueprints, send a lot of them back to Jitta, um, and then go into the gas and maybe start busting open some of this uh, mycocerosin, maybe like 5k of each. And then from there, starting to react and do stuff with it, making synth boosters. So, this guy's a limit. I have a lot of selling and cleaning up to do. Not to mention we have characters in Jitter right now that I'm gonna have to air their ships down and kind of re-gear for J space as well moving forward. So it's kind of where we're at. I love this whole organizing phase. It's my favorite part of any gameplay cycle in Eve is when you have a bunch of stuff and you gotta organize it and you're gonna walk away with a bunch of isk that you can then leverage into better experiences in the future. So yeah. I'm blown away with the isk that we've brought in and, you know, I think because we want for not that this isk will probably last a lifetime, but that's not to say we'll stop here. Okay, so I'm doing something right now that's quite, uh, what's the word? I guess dangerous would probably be the phrase to use here. Quite dangerous. What we're doing is we are selling blue loot. I'm going to do a few things that will hopefully get us out of trouble here. First of all, we're going to work to the station 100. Pick up a perch. And you'll understand why I'm doing this very shortly. You won't see it here, but I can still describe it. Okay, so when you sell blue loot, you go to market details and you look at the orders and you notice that there's a bunch of NPCs that are paying the same amount for them in certain quantities. These are just stations you can go sell blue loot to. That's the whole point of blue loot is that NPCs will always buy it for a fixed ISK value. That's why I say there's no point in collecting it. It's as good as ISK. Now, here's the problem. The stations that buy it are known, so if you find yourself in a trade hub like Jitta and you right click your blue loot and you go, okay, I'm going to sell it to the closest system, okay, one jump away or something, right? A couple jumps in Jitta, actually. If you do that, you're going to end up at a station with a guy there with a bunch of tornadoes or no seas or whatever he's got rocking now, right? And he's got him right at the edge, right where you warp to, and he will kill you and take your blue loot. No joke. This is a person, or there's been multiple multiple of them over the years, as far as I know, that camp these. They just sit there and wait for you to sell blue loot, and then they shoot you as you're landing, since you weren't careful enough. And they take your money. So when you sell blue loot, you gotta be really careful. Do not warp to stations without scouting them. It's that simple, unless it's a dead local. And even still, like you should just get in the habit of that, so. Anyway, if we look, 1.5 mil a pop, so if we go to sell, put it at immediate, right? I'm, I'm amazed that tax applies. Weird. Anyway, you can just immediately tell that we're gonna get almost the full value out of it. So we can do the rest with these, 4.1. Oh, oh, do different people buy different sleep? Oh, I have too many. <laughs> That's awesome. So if we go 1666, that's, uh, yeah, good. I have too much blue loot. I didn't even know that was a thing. Okay, so the order just loops. You can just rapid fire sell them. Okay, cool. Well, that's how you sell blue loot, nothing to it. The only thing is that you gotta understand that people understand how blue loot works. And they will be waiting for you. 
if you go the road most traveled. So you gotta watch for that. I didn't refit, so we're gonna squeeze back in there and uh, head back to Amamake after I refit into something a little bit less rigid than this tank fit. Okay, so I'm actually kind of freaking out right now because I was going through some of the loot and remember the blue chips? Remember these guys? Put them back here. If we look at these blue chips, remember how they're like 70, 80, 90 mil a pop? Dude. The estimated value is now 157. If you go over to Jitta, the price is like almost 200 mil a pop. People are straight up buying them en masse for 160, which is twice what we thought they were worth. So holy crap. So that means that if we look over here and we do 22 times 165, that's 3.6 billion. Holy crap. Yo, dude, I, this this price changed since I collected most of these, and I never noticed. You see back here how it spiked and then it shot down again over time? These are, I, must, I don't know what happened here. It looks like such a thorough climb that it could keep going, but if you go to buy seven day, it's pretty flat. I don't really care to play the market, so I'm going to unload them all. That's crazy. Wow. I just had to talk about that. So our journey was so long that the price on these doubled or almost tripled in some cases. That's crazy. Oh, hey there. So we have all those materials we've talked about ad nauseum. Uh, I kind of have figured out what to do with them and what they are now, all right? So for Myco Saracens, there's pretty much two things you can do with them. The first is this right here. We can make synth pill boosters by combining trash with the pure form to create these boosters or whatever it is, right? And so these are cool because synth boosters, yeah, they don't really give you much of a boost, but they also have zero chance of side effect, which is nice because this is a nice, reliable way to add power to your builds. But it's nice to have a stock of it. Now, I doubt we're going to need four bill worth, so we'll probably sell a bunch of this if we can, right? The other thing you can do with Myco Saracens is create like cap parts, okay? So if we go down to this and we kind of spider through here and we look at Amber Myco Saracen, you can see you can create Synth Blue Pill and you can also create this. And this is a cap part, right? You combine two different Myco Saracens and a molecular condenser in a molecular reaction to get this part, which essentially is then used for a component of capital ships, right? So what we're able to do is to kind of do both. So we're able to make boosters and we're also making cap parts here. And the value for the cap parts right now is really high. So we're going to try to make some profit off of these and sell them. So for the fullerines, well, there's two things you can do with the byproducts. You take those and you can make tech three cruisers and strategic cruisers, or you can then I believe make cap parts. So we're actually going to uh, try to take all of our fullerines and set them aside so we can literally make tech three cruisers and destroyers for ourselves which will be awesome so we're not going to sell any of the fullerine products for value so we'll probably stay in amamake for now so that, that's kind of catches you up on what we did with the materials i honestly like think this is enough income off of these base materials to last like the average player like a lifetime of eve if you do it right so it's kind of cool but of course um you know, we have some fun ideas, so I guess we'll get to that. This was an eventful adventure. We grabbed three superior ghost sites and bought a workle around when this series became a year old and loaded it up with supplies. From the East's Heimatar, we realized the power of the blue chip from low sec ghost sites, and in the Molen Heath, we mastered sleeper caches. Up north in Blackrise, we perfected our routing techniques, navigated around a regional superpower, and did some honest business with a local. Out west in Placid and Solitude, we embraced Omnivory and incidentally assassinated eight syndicate scoops, lining our pockets and growing our confidence. Down south, we treated the region a bit like a board game in order to stay one step ahead of the dangerous locals, 
collecting whatever we could get our hands on along the way. After we filled our Oracle's mining hold, we packed the caravan back up and headed back to Heimatar to process the materials. Overall, we collected tens and tens of billions of isk worth of goods, perfected some valuable techniques moving forward, developed a newfound appreciation for New Eden's low security sectors, and did it all without getting the Rurkel blown up. The question now becomes, what's next for the Jolly Ranchers? around. 